we begin our adventure in the mining village of Rawling Springs, which sits adjacent to the bottom part of the Firefang Mountain Range. The Firefang Mountains the past few months have been an excellent producer of silver and gold. Uh, several mining companies have set up camps adjacent to the mountain range and also in the lower portion of the mountain range and are, are mining the silver and gold and brought them quite a tremendous amount of money. The village of Rawling Springs was set up as one of the main villages here. But also with coming with this, the creatures that live deeper in the mountains have not really taken to the intrusion of the miners and what has followed them. These creatures have lived in these mountains for a long time and have, have their own attrition and their own ways they deal with things. And so far the past few months, these creatures have pretty much ignored what has went on with what they call the intruders to their mountain. But a few of the uh, creatures have been going and making excursions and a little bit of... Uh, attacks on some of the mining camps up in the base of the mountains, maybe not exactly in the village of Rawling Springs, but up in some of the camps themselves that word has got back. Winter has really set in. It's bitter, it's cold, it's snow, it's ice everywhere. Some of you may be used to it, some of you may not be. So we open up this morning to a bitter, cold morning to a commotion in the street of Rawling Springs. Loud voices can be heard from several of the village folks going off and on. One voice that overpowers the rest of them appears to be coming from what you recognize as the mayor, or so-called mayor of Rawling Springs, a little port halfling by the name of Butterscoop Frostfoot. You can tell he's angry, he's mad, he's upset. Alex. Tell me about your character. What has brought you to this mining village of Rawling Springs? What are you doing this early in the morning as you hear the commotion in the street? I am playing as Gray Finch, who is a scoundrel turned monk, who is trying to absolve himself of his past sins. He is here because he is actually... Uh, the third cousin of one of the miners, and uh, the miner asked for help, and so he's here to, you know, help people to absolve him of his past sins. And uh, this morning, he is, he's climbed on top of a roof, put his back against the chimney, and is meditating. Sounds perfect. We jump over to you, Crystal. Tell me about your character. What has brought them to Rawling Springs? What are they doing this morning as they hear the yells and shouts and commotion in the street? Um, I'm playing Carla Bear Hunter. Um, her official class is a uh, berserker, but you know she's called a uh, you know she's called many things: a barbarian, a savage, an angry woman. Uh, <clears throat> and she's a uh, and uh, she's uh, she, her backstory is uh, that she was a chieftain's daughter, uh, but her uncle uh, didn't believe that a woman sh could be in charge of their tribe. Uh, so he killed uh, her father and took the tribe, and she had to run away. Um, and now she's currently on a spirit quest of sorts, uh, believing that when the time is right, the spirits will guide her to take care of her her uncle. Uh, in the meantime, she just tries to generally be a, a, a kind of cheerful person, tries to be a, uh, a little bit upbeat, and maybe sometimes does that a little too well. Uh, but when that, when that uh, rage and anger builds up inside of her, no one wants to be around. <clears throat> and uh, she's currently, um, with all this yelling going on, she's waking up. Uh, she, she, and she's looking, she's looking at her surroundings. Uh, she has her arm, uh, she's in the, she's in the, the barn and, uh, in the, in a pile of hay and has her, uh, hand wrapped around a pig and she kind of looks at the pig and, and like, well, what are you doing here? I, I don't remember, I don't remember 
I remember you being here. <laughs> and then she kind of rubs her head and laughs it off. And she uh, she gets up and walks out of the barn in the uh, brisk cold. And just see, she actually just seems to kind of enjoy it. She takes in a big, deep breath and lets out that breath and lets the warm air mix with that cool air and that little fog cloud. And she's like, ah, oh, yeah, cold air. That always helps with my hangovers. Sounds perfect. We move over to you, Stephanie. Tell me about your character. What has brought them to this mining village, and what are they doing this morning as they hear the commotion? And you're muted also. Um, Cinders, she's stuck in this town. She's an elf. She's She did some... She got she uh, got in trouble a while back, and she ended up getting quested to do community service here. Um, because she's a mage, they didn't want her using her magic and causing more trouble. Um, so they quested her to do community service, and they clamped these stupid gauntlets on her. Um, you know, and they have her doing menial tasks all the time to serve her community service. And she's grumbling all the time. Um, she keeps asking when they're going to take them off, and they keep telling her when they get around to it, when she's served her time. And they never give her a straight answer. And her quest seems to be forever and ever and ever and ever. She may be here for 500 years for all she knows. And, well, that's she's destined to... Never harm these people, ever. She just wants her freedom. This cold morning with the commotion may bring her the freedom that she's been seeking here shortly. Mac, tell me about your character. What has brought them to the village of Rolling Springs, and what's your character doing this morning in the commotion? Uh, I'm playing Ives. Ives is a druid, and... Uh, as far as people know, Ives has always been here, probably even before the town has started. And uh, he also goes by the name of that old pain in the ass, uh, mainly because since the mining operations have gotten going, he has gone about his way trying every which way to correct this uh, great desecration to the mountain. Uh, mainly, he spends most of his time bringing wheelbarrows of soil down into the mine and planting mushrooms. But uh, today, he is out with a large pail of green paint in which he's painting blessings on all the houses. And uh, we're not sure if they're blessings or curses and hoping that they fall down. And he's also painting marks all over uh, the mine. So the commotion has brought him about. He's also followed around by a magey mutt. He just calls it dog. Um, he has no claim to the dog, but the dog seems to claim him. Uh, they share meals, and is as he would share a meal with anyone else. Um, and that's pretty much Ives. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. And we, we come to the last member of this soon-to-be-formed party, Tell us, Young, what is the ranger doing in the village of Rolling Springs? And what is he doing this morning as he hears this commotion in the cold, chilly air? Well, I'm going to be playing uh, Will Wolfrost today. Will is a young man who has been living in the village for about a year as one of its ranger wardens. Uh, he's answered the call of the wild, seeking adventures in the frontier region. That's the reason why he's there. Uh, he looks to be perhaps in his 20. Uh, early 20s with a fair yet brave face. You see him throwing on a chainmail over his dark leather armor after feeding his white bastard mutt 
Spectre. He wears a black fur coat, perhaps made from wolf pelts, uh, encrusted with snow and ice already. Uh, his dark hair hangs just past his eyes and ears, wet and frozen as his cloak. He carelessly combs the bothersome strand of icy hair dangling near his eyes, back over his head with, a finger, uh, with his fingers to get a better look around his surroundings, then wipes his hand on his side. On the side of uh, his hips um, hang an impressive adorned hilt of a bastard sword. On the right side hangs a dagger. Uh, rounding out his arsenal is a quiver filled with 15 arrows slung across his back. Will is carrying his longbow in his hand already. So he's, uh, get, he's getting ready to do his duty, you know, make his patrol around the town. Um, the young man looks at the people gathered near and says, uh, Winter's coming. No, it's not coming. It's already here. And it's here to stay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Perfect. Just a information blurb real quick for anyone who watches this. We're using Charlie Mason's white box as the rule set for this game. And we also have some of the characters that are uh, homebrew classes that I've come up with from various sources. We have a, a muck, a berserker slash barbarian, a druid or ranger, and rounding out the party is a standard elf magic user from white box. Now back to the morning as you five are beginning your morning and hearing this commotion in the street, you see a crowd starting to farm close down to one of the uh, taverns. And you, of course, you hear the voice and you would know him is the mayor, Butterscoop Frostfoot. And you can tell that he is livid. He is very upset this morning as you approach and you hear someone, someone has stolen my dog. What thing? What thing is missing? A stupid nephew of mine didn't stay up last night and watched it. Oh, somebody stole my dog. Somebody, I've, I've got to find someone to go get him. You know money is nothing for me. I will pay you enough money to bring him back to me. He's, he's a prize-winning sled dog. Can I get anyone who has enough guts to go? You hear him just yelling out in this crowd of probably 8 or 10, 12 people. Signing up. Will rushes over to the mayor, uh, listening to all the commotion, and he says, Mayor, what's, what is happening? I heard that you lost White Fang. Is this true? Yeah, and you all would know or probably know stories of his prize-winning sled dog, White Fang, has won several uh, competitions in this region. And he looks towards you, Will, first after looking, glancing at Cinder's first and noticing these shackles on, on her. But he looks back towards you, Will, and he goes, Well, my nephew was supposed to stay up last night and he'll keep an eye on the, on the pins and I don't know what the doofus did. I guess he walked off or fell asleep and something's come in and they've, they've taken White Fang. Uh, I've got to get him back. Who's taking White Fang? Well, I, I don't know, but... Uh, Speaking of, uh, I think it's, uh, you look like uh, you have some powers to you. I think it's time we take those shackles off and send you in search of it. I, I have plenty of corn here to pay everyone who wants to go. Well, That's Mayor, White Fang be Spectre's friend, and I cannot be an idol while his friend is lost. Sign me up, too. At this point, Gray Finch finishes climbing down off the building he was on and just walks over and says, I'll go. I'd like my freedom. Yeah, and you see a rather tall, lanky man that is standing there next to the uh, Mayor Frostfoot. You would know this to be the town constable. He's an older human and uh, pretty much does nothing in his job. He looks towards the mayor. The mayor looks back to him and gives him a nod as he comes over and takes the shackles and and things off of you, Sanders. And the mayor says, ah, yes, I definitely want you to go. And, uh, well, I just didn't, by that time, you hear a very booming voice coming, walking towards you. And you look and you see a very tall human yes. female that probably stands six foot tall with this very short, crop cut red hair. She's a very muscular, middle age, maybe around 40. And you would know that she's another one of the rangers in this area, and her name is Pelly, Pelly Snoop. 
and you see her approaching wearing her armor, her swords at her side, and she yells out, Orcs! Looks like orcs did it. We need to get them head of the mountains now before we get too deep. I love getting rid of orcs. I'm guessing the way the animal's been treated, he probably just ran off on his own. I mean, if you did treat him better, I'm sure he would uh, have stayed in the companionship. Uh, but, of course, you people use things like you do everything else. And uh, it, uh, uh, I'll go look. Perhaps he, he's probably accustomed to uh, the way that you treat him. And maybe uh, being in the wild on his own, it, I, I shall bring him back to you as much as it, uh, it tears me apart. Well, having you alone would be a great help, Eves. Yes, that, that would that would be of great help. And uh, he turns around. He starts painting the village sign with the words "death." <laughs> <laughs> he, he turns over to uh, the elf and says, "At least that'll get him out of the town." Looks towards you, Eves, and he doesn't say anything because he he's probably run into you before or know the way that your teachings are, and you know he doesn't say anything. He's he's so livid about you losing White Fang that he just he knows any kind of argument or discussion with you is pointless, and he looks towards the, the large woman who has walked up the ranger Pelly, and he goes, "Well, you say it's orcs uh, and stuff." Uh, and, uh, and I know Will here is a tracker. We need to send out as many teams as we can. There's one, two, three, four. Or there's five of you. You five. You five form a team. And Pelly, you get together whoever you need and head to the mountains too. And if anybody, dog sled, if you want dog sleds, you're going to need dog sleds to get into the mountains. You're not going to be able to go on foot or horseback. I will be glad to. Well, I can give you three. Three dog sled teams. Okay. Barbarism. <laughs> if you know how to use dog sleds. It's just like any sled. It's just pulled by dogs. Sounds good to me. I don't think I know how to use any sled. He turns over to you and says, My name be uh, uh, Will, Will Wolfross. Cinders. It's Thank good to meet you. And uh, it turns you. over to uh, um, Alexander's character. Uh, yeah, he will just like nod slightly, like a like a barely bow, and say, "Gray Finch is what they call me now." Using the sled should be pretty easy. You just sit on the sled and tell the dogs, just yell out "mush," and they run for you. Hmm. Perfectly acceptable, I suppose. But do they we, really want to run? Do they? Do they? I, I mean, that's... Come now, Yves. We are the friends. We feed them well. And we treat them well as, as well. They're our friends and not some sort of slaves, as you think. Yes, yes. Well, perhaps this running through the, uh, the hinterlands will will restore some of their wild spirit to them. Perhaps it would be good. Eves, you ask if the dogs want to run, but I've never met a dog that doesn't want to run. Yeah, but does he want to pull you? That's what I'm saying. Well, probably not, but I don't weigh too much. That, do I, I don't want to pull you. Why would he want to pull you? Do you want to pull him? He looks around. He's dripping paint everywhere right now. <laughs> Can you Is ask Chris the dog? Can you ask the dog if he wants to pull us? Ask the dog. Why would I ask the dog if he wants to pull? Of course, he doesn't want to pull you. If he wanted to pull you, he'd be pulling you already. Good point. Will turns over to his dog Spectre and says, "Spectre, do you want to do you want to pull us?" And he just turns around and says, "I love you. I love you. <laughs> Good dog." <laughs> Uh, 
the mayor has been standing there watching all of this, him and the uh, constable it says absolutely nothing to anyone. It's just his demeanor. Mayor Butterscoop looks and he goes, well, the uh, discussion about the dogs seem to be over, so uh, I can get this dog sled teams ready for you and uh, meet back here in one hour. Go get whatever equipment. It's going to be cold up in the mountains. and uh, just You've got to bring White Fang back. You need to leave in one hour. Do you understand? Aye, sir. Okay. All right. So got extra furs and extra, extra food and such and extra water. So what is this hour that you speak of? Uh, I actually can help with that. I pull out an hourglass, turn it upside down, and hand it to you and say, when that runs out of sand, you need to meet us. <sighs> You've trapped the sand. This should be laying about on the earth. What is this? You put it in bulbous things? Well, it's used to keep track of time, and the sand doesn't mind. The monks time. asked it up in the mountains. Monks in the mountains. Ah! Hey, they can speak to sand. Can you speak to sand? Let me listen. Oh, wait. They're trapped in glass. I hear them screaming now. Your people could talk to sand as well? I thought that was something that only my grandmother could do. Who might you be? Carla. Carla Bearhugger at your service. Are you here, now, here for our team as well? As well? Well, I've heard you guys have problems, and if you have problems, I'll take care of them for you. She kind of winks at you and does, like, finger guns. Will Wilfrost be my name? Cinders. Well. And I'm Gray Finch. Well, nice to meet you all. Nice so, <clears throat> so where am I going to aim my axe at? Well, we have one hour. And we're to come back here and meet the mayor. We have All right. We have to have the dog sleds ready for us. We have to find a lost doggy. Better than nah. picking nuggets from the mine. He's not lost. He just ran away. Okay. So we go find a lost doggy. Or he ran away. You know. He went to take a leak or something. You know, we'll find him and come back. So wanna, during this hour, um, Will goes pick, back to his... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I don't know. Uh, picking nuggets in the mine does sound like fun. Carla seems like she's having a, a dilemma. Trust me. Been doing it as long as I have. It's not fun. All right. I'll, I'll, trust, I'll trust you. Well, that's true. If everybody's looking for the dog, nobody's working in the mine. And he starts turning around. He starts shouting to everyone, everyone, come, come, let's go help find this dog. Everybody out of the mines, let's go. Let's go help find the doggy. It's going to be <laughs> awfully cold up in the mountains. I'd say we go and get as much warm clothes as possible to load up our sleds. Ah. Sacrifices. Yes. You're smart, Druid. As long as the monsters are killing all of them, they can't kill us. I like that idea. Yes, miners, come on, come. Let's let's go find the dog. <laughs> you see, most of the townsfolk at the, at the sound of the Druid and the uh, what they would know as the Berserker. You see, most of them hearing that call for their help, and you see most of them start to dissipate out from the crowd as had formed and going about their own business now, but you see the big, tall, red-headed ranger, Pelly, as she's been watching this, and she's standing out with her arms crossed, and she just goes, we'll see who brings the dog back. I'm sure it will be me and my team. Don't bet on it. Yeah, I think the dog will come back on his own. You're not the only <laughs> ranger around here, God. Um, so There's only one that matters. Just so we're, just so we're clear, we're we're gonna kill that other team, right? Like I'm, I just need to know before we get out there. Um, You're not serious, uh, are you? I this is that is a can't really do well, that. I, I'm just I'm like. I'm kind of requested not to hurt these people. 
Well, I'm just saying that other team, they're challenging us. Do you want me to just flex my muscles at them? If they happen to die along the way, well, I can't help that. I'm okay. just saying, if they happen to die along the way, I can't help that. All right, I read you loud and clear. I'll flex my muscles at them. Carla, like, rips her fur coat off and throws it in the snow and begins to flex her muscles at them. As you do that, Carla, and you notice and, and see Pelly up close, you can tell Pelly is as big and tall and as broad and muscled as you are pretty much. And you would know that she has no fear or, or nothing in her eyes, even being a ranger. But she's dealt with your kind before, so she just stands there and stares at you straight in the eye as you do so. She, she won't have a flex off with me? No, she just stands there with her arms crossed and her wearing her chain mail. She's sitting there watching you. Yeah. Well, Carla is disappointed that that uh, she won't have a flex off. And she'll pick up her coat and say, well, then screw you guys. And she'll walk towards the tavern. Yeah, and you five would know. You have about an hour. If there's anything you want to do as far as whatever equipment you need to get together, or if there's anything else that you want to do as far as investigative stuff to, to find out more yourselves if you wanted to. You have about an hour to kill before the sled dog teams are ready. Will heads back to his place to uh, load up his pack backpack with uh, warm clothes and yeah. and um, other uh, wintry gear. Uh, he has a he pulls out a grappling hook, a rope, and a flint and tinder, along with a couple bottles of water. Yeah. Mm, Carlo will go to the bar and she'll open the door and say, <clears throat> "I'm betting one drink that I can whip any of you in an arm wrestling match." <laughs> nice. You see most of the uh, patrons of, of this tavern as they see you come in, most of them start putting their stuff down and leaving because they know your reputation and stuff. Well, come on. Who's going to be the first? Oh, I need that. I need this really? No one's willing to buy me a drink today? Well, screw you guys. Uh, Gray Finch will walk up behind you and say, Very well. I bet you can't beat me in an arm wrestling contest. Aha! Challenge! I like it! And then Gray Finch leaves the tavern. You can't beat him if he doesn't compete. <laughs> Carla's not smart enough to get that. She, where are you going? <laughs> you are we going to wrestle? Are we outside? I don't know what you're doing, but as long as you don't beat me in an arm wrestling contest, you owe me a drink. Can't beat you if you don't compete. Exactly. So go ahead and get me a drink. That's not how this works. <laughs> I think you owe me a drink. Like that's not how this works, right? Like he can't do that, right? That's against the rules. I think he, I think you owe him a drink. Bartender, what's the cheapest drink you have? It's always the stuff you always get. You know that by now. Oh, yeah, the one copper stuff. All right, yeah, uh, I'll take two of those. As long as you don't tear up any more tables and chairs. She'll uh, hand him a silver coin and she'll... Uh, and she doesn't really know uh, math, so she just hands him a silver coin. Oh, that, that'd that be perfect. I'll, I'll take one today. I'll let you have both of them for one instead of two. Nice. And she will uh, she'll grab her, uh, her drinks, and she'll uh, hand the monk one. This stuff right here, really great stuff. She just downs her, her L like it's nothing. Uh... Yeah, Greyfinch smells it and curls his nose up. And he smell it like an eyeball comes up to the top and kind of like pops over. Ugh, gross. <laughs> no, but he smells it. He curls his nose at it, but he, uh, you know, he chucks it down anyways and hands you the cup back. Ah, that hit the spot, eh? It hit a spot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
What about Eves? Anything that Eves would want to prepare for before he leaves on this voyage? Uh, Eves is just, just going to continue to go around uh, and continue to deposit his blessings on different houses and that because he, he pretty much carries everything with him. And he has this large green leather backpack that uh, that has all his world's possessions in it. Um, so he's he's just going to go about, uh, except for his wheelbarrow, which he can't remember where he put right now. But uh, yeah, he's just going to go out until he sees that everybody else is coming back together. He's keeping his eye on the the sand that the captured sand. And uh, as soon as the captured sand is ready to be released, he will uh, he'll make his way back to the town square. Cinders Cent packs up, you know, whatever she doesn't already have on her. She packs up stuff, makes sure she has provisions for traveling in the, you know, in in the wilderness. Perfect. And you, you five yeah. are able to, to get your uh, equipment provisions and everything that you know that you're going to need because you would know that uh, deeper up into the mountains itself, it's it's going to be uh, tail of survival unless you catch up with these uh, orcs, if that's what's did it if pretty soon. As you five make your way back to, to the mayor, sure enough, he has these uh, three dog set teams that are ready. Uh, there's some uh, equipment stuff packed on them. But as you're making your way back, you meet Pelly and her team heading out, uh, trying to get a head start on you. And you see the uh, constable is one of her team members, and you see a couple more. Uh, maybe um, Carla, you would notice them because a couple of the uh, narrow do well people in town that kind of do shady stuff. You've probably seen them in the tavern before. You notice that her team seems to be made up of uh, what you'd almost call cutthroats and hooligans. Cool. More people to kill. <laughs> but sure enough, Mayor Frostfoot gives you your stuff and he goes, please get started. You've got to you've got to get into the hills, even though it's morning, you've got to get into the mountains before and when it gets dark up there, it's gonna be it's gonna be awful. You've gotta you've gotta find Well, Pelly said it's orcs. It's gotta be orcs. If she said it's orcs, it's orcs. Have we found any trails of orcs nearby? Did you go look for them? No, he, he just asks the mayor. He looks at you when you say that, and he, and he says, well, Pelly said there was orc tracks over there by the the, the dog uh, houses, and so if she said that there's got to be orcs. When Where was the last place that you saw White Fang? He was in his pen last night, where he always is. Do you mind if we go over there to investigate? What have you been doing this past hour? Why did you not go over there then? You're going to be, ah, oh, do whatever you want. I'm so aggravated. Mayor, we were drinking. We have priorities, you know. He goes over there without <laughs> without uh, further ado. He goes over to the, the kennel uh, where the dog would have been kept, and uh, he searches around for signs of orcs or any other intrusion. Yeah, as you make your way over there, you see the mayor. He's just disgusted with, with the whole matter of everything. I mean, he's, his prized dog is missing, and, you know, Pelly is, is headed out ahead of y'all, and now he's thinking that maybe your team is not going to be the one to come back with him, but he just, oh, I just can't believe it. But, uh, um, yeah, go ahead, uh, Ranger, and roll, your, uh, roll me a D6 for forestry. Uh, can Carla also make a check with her survival? Two. She won't need to. As you look around, Will, you definitely you see the footprints where some of the townsfolks and the mayor and, and all those have went over this morning. But sure enough, you start to see some tracks that definitely appear that they were made by an orc. Maybe more than one. Is he able to find out how many? You would tell that uh, it appears that you can pick up there's probably was maybe three or four that may have come in and if they're the ones that did this, actually did this, uh, you can tell there's probably three or four that are leading out of town. He um, he has his dog right next to him, so he lets uh, Spectre sniff the, the the nearby area and the, and the footprints, 
and says, "Well, let us let us begin tracking then." And he sets out. Yep, as your team sets out on the mayor, like I say, had you three dog sled teams, which you know would be plenty. Can I have my owl? Ma ma pardon me. May I have my owl fly overhead and and try to do like an overwatch? You sure can. If if any of you have any um, flying uh, companions, they they can fly ahead of you. Can I have a dragon companion? Next game, you can. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, you five uh, get a, get your sleds and you head out going towards uh, the beginning of going to the Firefang Mountains. Have any of you been here before? Have any of you been up to the mining camps before? I worked in the mining in the mines. Will would have. I've been run out of the mining camps. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to a different set of mountains if that counts. Yeah, Sanders, you and Will are you know familiar with the lower base of the mountains of, of going up to the mining, the little uh, setup camps and tents and stuff. So as you begin, and, and Will, you're still trying to keep some eye that you can on these tracks that are leading out. It appear to be from orcs. You know, you're able to follow them as it goes for probably getting up into the lower base is pretty easy, but it's starting to get colder. It's not snowing, but as you move up to the lower base, and you start following these tracks, it appears that one of them are going towards one of these mining camps. And as you do, what's the name of this mining camp, Cinders? I'm sorry? What's the name of this mining camp? What would you like to name this mining camp that you're headed to? Camp Base Star. All right. You see that it's leading towards Camp Base Star. As, as you're going up that way, if you want to share that with the rest of them, if you would be familiar with this mining camp. Yes. And y'all proceed up that way, and as you get to the edge of the camp, you start noticing some of the tents that have come off their pegs, and they're kind of floating in the wind and in in things. It appears that um everything is quiet, super quiet at this time. It's probably mid morning by now. We'll say around ten almost 11 o'clock. You don't see any guards that are posted. Is any of the snow red? Not yet. Okay, cool. Carla says, well, no one's died in the snow. I will release the tents and let the wind take them. I, I don't think the tents belong to nature. Oh, they've, I, I'm sure the nature will take better care of them than you wasteful people would. You know, I heard someone say that uh, tents sometimes end up in the oceans and choke baby seals. I also heard that, except I don't know what a baby seal is. I've uh, never I heard of that. I don't know what a baby seal is either, but it sounds terrible. What's an ocean? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a river, but it's a lot bigger. I see. Uh, I, I'll start looking around. Is there any? Are there any prints here besides human prints? Yeah, there's only human prints that you see right now. And Will, you would have noticed right before you got to this. Also, something strange you would maybe want to share with the party is you noticed that it, uh, Pelly's shrub tracks of her dog sled teams appear to veer off back on another trail instead of going up to this mining camp even though you start to see some of the orc tracks coming towards this mining camp itself but you would have noticed that her team actually veered off and went back towards the northwest on another trail that she didn't actually come to this mining camp but yeah the only tracks you see mostly now are, are the humans except will probably can track a orc or two off and on um <laughs> Can I can I uh, do a survival? Are check? you saying Pele went the wrong way, or is or come back to the right way? Yeah, I was I was gonna ask. Can I check the way that she went and see if I can see any tracks that she's following, or see if maybe they just went the wrong way? Yeah, Berserker, do that for me. Okay, three on three. 
you catch real quick with a right on the dot skill check. You 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 catch that uh you're not really sure. You don't see any orc tracks leading off the trail she went, but it you know it kind of does make you think why would she veer off in this other trail if the only tracks are that you can find are coming into this mining camp. <laughs> Looks like our our other muscle brown friend is 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 kind of dumb. They they're not following orc tracks. <clears throat> Should have had a flex off. I would have won. But I see the tracks too. It seems like she has been following the old trails. But why will she be, veer off at this point? Maybe she knows something that we don't know. She's been awfully suspicious since the town. Maybe she's just dumb, and she just tracked wrong. Maybe she took the dog. That's what I'm thinking. I say we follow her. Well, I say we head up to the camp, because it's quiet up there, and it shouldn't be, right? It should be loud with picking. And if it's quiet, that means that maybe there's something to kill, because it killed other things. Well, I don't know what is more likely, that we will find that she has taken it, or we will find that the orcs took it. But if she is going that way, and it is obvious the orcs went the other way, I am much more suspicious of her. Yes, me too. Yeah, but we could always come back and track her later. No, I think tracking her first is higher priority. All right, fine. We'll go kill her first. But we better kill some orcs too, damn it. You know, there is a good chance we won't be killing people today. Nah, that's not going to happen. That I kill people every day. Someone's going to die today. Well, up in the cold mountains, people have known to kill each other to eat for uh, eat meat. Let's just hope that we don't get that desperate. Carla takes a step away from Will. <laughs> Will turns you, Will turns to uh, to Carla and goes. <laughs> <laughs> I like Will. meat. I'll go ahead, Matt. I like meat. Uh, yeah, if you guys need to eat somebody, go ahead and eat me, but just jerk me first, okay? I mean, yeah, sure. I, I can do that. Uh, you want to uh, go on a tree or something? Okay. Will, you and Carla make me your D6 check again for me as y'all are looking around a little bit of the edge of his camp. Four. Three. Will, you begin to maybe, you know, you're wanting to, to move maybe into the camp itself as you move 10, 15 feet ahead of the party. And you start noticing a close to area where there's quite a bit of snow and, and probably some ice itself that, you know, where that snow has been pushed back by the miners to keep their camp as weatherable as they can. But you notice a large area of intrusion of rock and snow and ice that has been pushed up from the ground. It does not seem natural from where you're at. He relays that information uh, that it looks unnatural to the rest of the party. So they're digging into the ground or or maybe they're digging up from the ground. That seems like what's happening. Seems like something has been digging up from the ground. Maybe it's something we can kill. Maybe it is. And uh, he continues to look into it. And uh, he walks over to it and, and uh, uh, with his hands uh, tries to uh, dig just, uh, just a foot into it. Yeah, Will, when you actually move up to it, before you start able to dig and stuff, you see the bodies of three, what you would presume to be miners that are have been thrown out and like injected and... and 
you can see like burn marks on part of their skin and stuff. But um, you notice this, this intrusion out of the ground is very large. It's something had burst up out of the ground and pushed the snow and ice and some of the rock away. But you notice the three bodies of, of some of the miners laying there. Do I recognize the, bo the, the bodies? Do I recognize the you, miners? You tell me, do you? Is this some of your friends? If it is, yeah, sure, tell me. Oh, shit. Yes. That's Jason, that's Mark, that's Harold. You know the victims? Yes. They suck, but I do know them. Do they suck well? Well, I mean, they're 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 idiots, but you know, oh. there are no wells around here for miles and miles. <laughs> I just can't. okay. <laughs> but they they didn't deserve to die. Well, I mean, you don't know that. Death comes to us all every once in a while. They didn't desire, deserve to die today, you know, today or whenever it was, but I still they didn't deserve to that. die this way. We don't have any time to bury the bodies. No, we don't. No, don't bury them. We should let the scavengers take them. Sounds fine to me, but they... I'm, I'm sure they're hungry this time of year, too. It has been cold. Yeah. Will but, continues to search the area um, for more signs of. But know, they were uh, burned. Stuff. Yeah, it appears there's some kind of you know burning or something to the flesh, you know that uh, something whatever they got engaged with or there's some type of, of, of flesh burning. Was it? Could could I tell if it was magic or 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 natural? Oh, uh, just throw me d six and let me know what you get. Six. You have no idea. I mean, it, it, it no could idea. be anything. Okay. It's fine. Gray Finch is going to go look at the hole in the ground and say, Hey, Yives, what, what is this? Some kind of ice volcano? Ice volcano? Says, I don't know. I, I think maybe it's one of these, you know, horrendous alchemical things. That uh, they bring things into the mountain and they make them uh, blow up into fireballs. Perhaps they got consumed in one of their own little tricks. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. Sounds Ice okay. Volcano. I've never seen anyone mix things together and make stuff explode. I never saw that, did I, in, in the mine? Nope. Sure have not. Okay. I'll start mixing things. <laughs> Carlos can huh. search the bodies to see if they have anything on them. No, the bodies don't, but everybody can say, as you search around the camp, you don't find any more of uh, the miners here at the base of this camp or anything. It seems to be pretty quiet. And we'll start. Alex, roll me a percentile D100. Uh, 76. Well, let me tell you what you're going to find. As you move around and, and sort of peering, um, Gray Finch, you find, um, some, some type of fur, some type of pelts under, hidden up under some stuff that uh, maybe one of the miners had been doing, doing some trapping, but it appears that they didn't know their skills very well and they're damaged. But you, you would think maybe if you wanted to take them with you, you'd get about a gold piece each. You find six of them. I mean, are they, uh, could I wear them? Oh, yeah, you could if you wanted to. You could probably stitch them up and wear them. Yeah, I'm going to just put them on for now. All right. Uh, Carla, roll me a percentile. Okay. Uh, 49. Oh, this is perfect for you. Yes. As you're, <laughs> as you're moving around in the 
the camp itself, you find a, one of their kegs that is about half full. It's, it's a, probably about a 16-gallon keg, you would think. But it seems to be maybe have eight gallons of the most watered-down wine, office-tasting wine you've ever had. Nice. Uh, okay. You, and you would know there's room on the sled that you could put it on one of the sleds if you wanted to take it. Okay. Yeah, I'm certainly going to. Uh, I'm certainly going to take it. Guys, they have some really nice wine over here. Seriously, you should try this stuff. This stuff is better than that stuff I get at the tavern. I feel like anything is. <laughs> Cinders, as you're looking around the camp, roll me a percentile. Let's see what you can find. 78. All righty. You find some more uh, pelts. It appear to be a little bit more better taken care of, and um, you know if you wanted to take them with with you, you could probably get three gold a piece if you took them and sold them. There's six of them. All right. Yeah, I've, I've wear one and pelts. and uh, put the other pelts on. Offer offer them to the other guys. That sounds good. What about eyes? Uh, he says, you know, when I die, I want you to skin me and wear me, too. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> you know, I just might. <laughs> I've never skinned a human before. Could be an interesting challenge. Ives, do you want to search around for something? Skin? Yes, I'll search around. All right. Let me know what you get. Uh, I try some of that wine that... that uh, the Carla found. <laughs> 26. All right. You find some more uh, furs, and you're probably by now wondering, what are these miners doing with all these furs that seem they've captured and stuff? But whoever did these, it, it, it evidently tried to put some type of stuff on them to maybe help them um, cure better, but they've stained them. And um, you'd still think maybe you'd get a gold piece uh, each for but there's four of them. Do we know what kind of fur these are? Yeah, I mean, there's some of the local local small mammals and animals that are in, in the mountains itself you would recognize. I start a fire and I begin to burn my furs. <laughs> <laughs> Carla already has a uh, a fur and seems to be made out of uh, bear pelt, so she's not worried about more furs. Carla, can I try some of that wine that you found? Oh yeah, it's great. All right, I try <laughs> some of it. It is the most awful watered down wine you've ever tasted in your life, <laughs> especially for especially for an elf. I tr I spit it out immediately. Hey, that's alcohol abuse. It is alcohol abuse. That that that's a that's a that, whatever the whatever the hell that is. That, that is alcohol abuse. Well, I'll just it's more for me then. I'll, I think it's delicious. What about Will? Does he want to search? Yeah, uh, but he says before he does so, he says, "Remember, we're driving our sled, and we'll be drink, drunk driving." <laughs> no, I'm I'm stone sober. I, I spit mine out. <laughs> no, it takes a lot more than this to get me drunk. Don't you worry about it. Roll 24, by the way. Huh, okay. You find uh, four of these ivory horns, these small ivory horns that appeared to come off some, some type of mammal or animal or something that you've never seen before. They're shined up, and you know they'd be worth about five gold a piece. Nice. He uh, brings them over to Yves and says, Do you know what these are? <laughs> A desecration. That's what they are. <laughs> Marla, Marla will look at them. She might know what they are. I'll look them over, too. Can I can I do a can I do a uh, survival awesome. and see if I can figure out what they are? 
Y'all can, but both of you will have to do a, a minus one to your. Let's see, you get a three, Carla. So you'd have to drop a. You're gonna have to get a two out of six. Okay. Oh, I got a three. Yeah, I got a four. Yeah, you both look at them, and you know, uh, being you know somewhat familiar with the area, I mean, it appears maybe just a quick glance. If you, if they come from this area, you can something you've never seen before, or did they bring them from somewhere else? So you really don't know. Probably belong to a goat. I guess it's a boar of some sort. A boar, that's what I think. No, this is obviously a goat horn. A goat horn. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a wolfentinger. <clears throat> a wolfentinger? <clears throat> Tell me of these wolf and dingers. They don't exist. Come on. Well, don't, don't, don't be know. ridiculous. These have these belong to jackalopes. Jackalope. Yeah, you know what? Jackalopes, but that's it. No, they, they can't be jackalopes. Jackalopes live on the plains. Jack yes. <clears throat> I thought the they white were snipes. jackalopes. They're snipes. snipes. Snipes don't have horns. Snipes are birds. Oh yeah. Uh, Golden right. winter Maybe. jackalopes, I tell you. Maybe maybe snipes have horns like inside their their feathers. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. But will a winter jackalope is called a walpertinger? Are they from the ocean? I did not know that. No, ah, they're from the mountains. Perhaps narwhal. It's the narwhal horn. That's what it is. No, are we just making up funny words now? Narwhal. Are we? Narwhal. 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 I think, I think someone has been drinking too much wine. <laughs> Carla. I know nothing. Uh, Carla, Carla drinks down a big swidge of wine, and then she's kind of like pointing at uh, at um, at our magic user. She's Hello. Like, like that person's been drinking too much as she's like drinking down a big gulp of wine. <laughs> I keep adding furs to the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten how many I have. So if anybody else has theirs laying around. All right. So what about this? Uh, ca like this? Um, is there like a cave or something where they were mining at? No, you would know, but this is probably the, one of the smaller base camps. That, you know, this is just where they stayed, and they probably traversed on into the mountains for where they were actually doing the, the mine. There's no cave around here. Are there still orc tracks in this area? You notice after looking around and finding these items and finding the dead bodies and the um, explosion of the, the explosion of the ground upward, and you notice that you've lost these orc tracks. It appears that if they went on up in the mountains from this way, but you don't see any signs of them of this way at all. Okay, like can I? Can I do a survival to try and track them, or is it just like it's like it's going to be no good? It's going to be no good. I mean, you, you've completely they've completely like disappeared. I mean, maybe you know, did they turn around and go back the way they come from that y'all came from, or did they go off some side trail? Or but yeah, they're pretty much disappeared from here. Hmm. Maybe they're magic and they levitated away. I think you've been drinking too much. I'm starting to think that you've been drinking too much. You don't know anything about magic. You don't know. You can do that. I, that you've I, been think, I, I think I know something about magic. Oh, I haven't seen you use any magic. Would you like to? Would you like to see me cast some magic? Can no. you? Can you use your magic to? Make the trail this uh, trail appear again. <laughs> well, if we've lost the trail, the only way to go now is after those dogs, those dog snatchers that we gotta kill. <clears throat> well, we don't have to kill anyone, but yes, go after the dog snatcher and kill them. <laughs> The mayor will probably pay us extra for killing them. 
save him the trouble and all. I think the mayor might put metal gauntlets on your hands as well if he finds out that you're just killing people. Well, I'm not just killing people. I'm killing thieves. It's a difference. Well, if you know for sure they're thieves, he might cut you some slack. Well, let's go find them and the dog they stole. And then I can kill them and we can return the dog. <laughs> let's go back the way we came then. Most of you are thieves stealing from the earth everything that it has. You just learn to share. <laughs> I mean, what if we're just sharing with the earth what the earth has? I don't see the earth giving this to you. Does the earth suddenly say, hey, little thing, here, rip the stuff out of my guts. Yes. Yes, you it did, that. actually. <clears throat> I, I don't hear that. It did. Oh, look. Come on, you're, you're not said, listening. You're not you listening. Come talk to my grand, you you're not come listening well enough. Oh, the sand is screaming again. You should come talk to my uh, grandmother. She'll tell you all about it. You're not as mm. old as I am. You, you, you haven't been listening long enough. Here? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so... We're going to go back and attempt to follow the sled now. That's the plan. You want to go back and try to follow the way that um, Kelly went? I guess so. Yes, so. Yep. 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 Yeah, you get back to the, the Northwest um, Trail that she took and, you know, the, the tracks that she made. And sure enough, y'all are able to follow it for uh, quite some time. She's, of course, has a, a bigger lead on you now of wherever she's going. But, um, Y'all move along for quite a ways, and you notice that the, the mountains is getting steeper, and it's getting colder, and there's a cold wind that is blowing. Uh, I need everybody to make me a saving throw, please. Let me know if you fail. If you pass, it's okay. Am I rolling above or under? <clears throat> a save, you need to roll equal to or above. Is this ah, I failed. Nineteen, he makes it. Sixteen. Is this versus magic? Nope. Okay, I failed. But it's poison, right? Nope. <laughs> oh well, then yeah, no, I failed. Everybody that failed will lose one point to their constitution, as you are going into a region that is colder than anything you've ever been in. So if you failed, knock down one point off your constitution for temporarily. And if what, if, your HP. what if I'm wearing an intense amount of furs right now? This is the most intense cold you've ever been in. Well, that sucks. Sucks to be me. Oh, right. it actually does make me lose HP. That sucks. That, no, that does suck if it does. So make, what, make whatever adjustments if you do lose HP. Note them down for right now. It's temporary effect. Carlos shivers a little bit like, ooh, it's a little chilly out here. 16 saves, right, for me? Oh, uh, yeah, I would think definitely okay. for a fifth level and off, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Will, are you wanting to maybe go in the lead um, sled as far as using your tracking and all that, or what would you like to do? Yeah, he'll be out in front. All right, roll me your uh, D6 again. Five. Yeah, you're, you're still following the trail, what appears to be maybe the, the, what you are thinking Pele took. I mean, because it's definitely uh, sled trails and all that. It seems they're going a very high pace, more so than you, you and your team are. I mean, it's like they're really getting up to the – higher part of the mountain and, and seem to be in a hurry to get there from what you could tell as you're moving along. You don't see any more orc tracks or any other type of tracks like that though right now. Yeah, he relays that information to the rest of the group. We should pick up the pace then. If, 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 they're, pick, if they're picking up the pace, they seem to know something that, that everybody else does not know. 
we should pick up the pace. I mean, maybe they picked up the pace because they're currently chasing the orcs. Maybe they are in. They can see the orcs, and that's why they veered off. There's, there's no. He just said that there's no tracks of the orcs. Well, maybe they're covering the tracks up as they go. Okay. In any case, maybe we should pick up the pace. Mush, cover but they're the mush. They're not their own. He he rushes his dog. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, you, you pick up the pace yourselves, you and your other two teams that are falling behind you, and continue for a ways as you start going up into a steeper part of the mountains that this trail is going. It's it's even though you're picking up your pace, it's starting to take some some wear on these dogs. I mean, they're not used to going up this, this steep incline probably as much, but I mean, you're still moving moving along at a decent pace. What about Carla? Would she like to try to stop and look for tracks or anything at this point or just keep going? No, she'll just <clears throat> follow the group. She'll follow along with the group. Um, you know, they seem to know where they're going and she's not going to slow everyone down. All right. We should rest the animals. Rest the animals, yes. Yes, rest the animals. Nah, they're fine. I don't think so. No, they. I, I, I know a thing or two about animals. Okay, they're fine. I don't think so. Let's ask the animals. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I feel like funny-looking hippie druid type people usually know what's up with animals. I like this. There's one. a druid here. Yeah, you can tell by the fact that he's, he's wearing leaves on his head. <laughs> I, I wear leaves on my head all the time. Usually after I wake up from a you know drunken orgy or something. Uh, I mean, no one's ever called me a druid. That's because you're very clearly not a druid. You talk about murder constantly. <clears throat> I mean, you don't know. You don't know, you don't know me. You don't know I'm not a druid. I'll that do the best of my ability to stop the slub. Does the consensus continue to wish to go forward and maybe push these animals, or do y'all want to stop, or what would y'all like to do? I, Let's find a shelter first, and then we shelter. can rest the animals. Find a shelter. I, I like that suggestion. Let's find a shelter. And rest the animals. Fine, if we're going to rest the animals, then I'll search for more tracks. Uh, four. Carl, as you continue maybe searching for the tracks, um, uh, the rest of the party, tell me what you're doing to prepare for shelter up on this edge of this mountain as it's starting to get, it's mid-afternoon now, and you would know that it's probably going to be getting darker within probably two hours. What are you doing to prepare up on the rock side of this mountain to, to get some type of temporary shelter? Asking the uh, ranger what to do. Ah. Well, first we have to get out of the trails. We have to find a wider place. So he looks for a path to some place that's wider, maybe uh, hoping for some sort of a, a ledge. Um, if there's a cave, that's what he would be looking for. Yeah, Carla appears maybe to be something looking that's around. unoccupied. A cave that's unoccupied. Huh. <laughs> we hope. All right, Ranger, roll me your d6 Let's again. Let's have to clear out the cave. He rolls four. You and Carla both are searching for something, and not being up on this side of the mountain before, you're unable to, to find any kind of a outcropping or outledge or any type of, of cave or anything. You would know, but probably at this point, to set up any type of shelter, but it's going to have to be with things that you brought. Oh, good. Are are we at like a mountain trail that's really narrow near the near the uh, uh, near the valley and edges, or are we in a, a fairly wide um, open space? You went up to pretty much almost. Uh, it's fairly wide in this area, but it's pretty steep as you're going steeper up in the mountains itself. Well, then I suppose that we can dig a hole into the snow. 
make a temporary shelter with the uh, uh, snow by digging through it. So uh, he starts we... digging and tries to make a, a igloo, basically. Is there is there any way to jury rig this one tent and use the one tent to jury rig that to to uh, you know to make use for for the rest of us? I have one tent. Could we, could we use that to help the rest of us? Help help the rest of the group. Sp stretch it out to provide shelter for the rest of the group. Are you asking me or asking the group itself? I'm asking. I'm asking Will and I'm asking um, Carla and and, right. and, uh, and and Ives, since they seem to be the ones that. No survival the best. We'll be able to use the a tent here, but the wind could pick up. And if so, it could fly away. If we had some furs, we could like maybe lay them on the ground we and have furs. use them as we blankets. Have we have some furs. Oh, well we could lay them on the ground and use them as blankets. Okay. I mean I mean if anyone did something dumb like burn their furs or something. Uh, you know they're gonna have to sleep in the snow, but uh, but the others will have uh, f will have uh, fur blankets. Okay. Help me dig the shelter first. Just dig through it, make a little little wide wide hole, and then okay. we can line the line the floor with the furs. Yes. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, yeah. Gray Finch is just basically doing what the ranger said already. He's not participating in this debate. Uh, I'm di uh, uh, helping no helping to do what now. they suggest. Yeah. Yeah, are y'all prepared to some type of maybe temporary shelter or maybe even have to turn into a shelter for the rest of the night? Like I say, as you know, it's going to take some time to do that. And, of course, the ranger is the most prepared with equipment-wise. But um, you're able to get it set up, and, and after you do, you notice... He's probably just by looking at the skies, the ranger, the berserker, probably the druid would know that it's probably about an hour before nightfall is going to start sitting in, in, in this middle range of the mountain that you found yourselves in. <clears throat> Carla has a shovel, by the way. So, I just wanted to say, like, to make it easier on us. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, <clears throat> So, um, do we need to roll to see if we can make a proper shelter or anything? Oh, no. I mean, you, you, you've got some stuff, and you find enough um, to, to set up the tent and use those furs that you found at the mining camp and things that, that are going to help you set up a, a shelter. But the question would be, what are you going to do to get a fire going to, to last the night? Um, there's no wood or anything around? There's no trees. There's small brush, but I mean, you're you're talking about you're in a rocky part of the mountain itself. Okay. You're looking. You're lucky enough though to see on the dog sleds there has been some bundled up firewood, but you don't know how long it will last. Okay. I, I have flint. I have tinder. I have oil. Now, oh, yeah, the oil will burn for a little while, but for a few minutes. Yeah. For an hour, maybe. Yeah, um, mostly wood will be better. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll, t uh, I'll tell you what. Um, what I'll do is uh, is uh, the shovel I have, uh, I'm going to break off the tip of it, the metal part, uh, and then I can break up the handle so we'll have more wood. Sorry, there's a vacuum cleaner going on here. I actually have... a. Two sticks of firewood on that random thing generator. We'll say instead of sticks, we'll say you have two bundles. That's what we'll say. Even though it says sticks, I'm, I'm gonna say you got two bundles. Sounds good. So yeah, I by just the looks of it, have firewood. By the looks of it, will last perhaps about two, three hours with the amount of wood that we have. Um, what do we need so much wood for? I just goes over to one of the dog sleds and starts hacking at it with a sickle. <laughs> It's gonna be awfully. It's gonna be awfully cold out here. I mean, I thought you were making a shelter, and then we'd all get inside it, and then won't we warm up the shelter? 
with well we'll have to bundle in. up with all the dogs yeah and dogs are very warm dogs are very warm i'm getting lots Don't of women it. I, that's not necessary, old man. No, it's very fun. You don't have to do that. We we'll, have destroy the, we'll destroy the sled when we have to. Everybody roll me a D6. Everybody roll D6. If you get a one or two, <coughs> let me know. Five. I got a one. I got a six. Eaves, I got one. Got, uh, the ranger got one. What about Eves? Five. Those of you who've got one here at the same time, as you hear this noise overhead and you think it's the wind that is picking up more as you look to the sky and you see this creature coming down from the mountains itself as it's flying down towards you and it is solid quiet as it's flapping its wings and it, at that point as it sees you and turns towards you it lets out this yell. The ranger, the berserker, the druid, maybe the rest of you would recognize this, is a very small and immature young white dragon that is coming towards you. A dragon! Prepare yourselves. Carla's going to, uh, Carla's going to uh, grab her, uh, her shield and her spear. Off of the, uh, off of the, um, <clears throat> no, I, yeah, yeah, shield and spear off the uh, cart for now. Can I, can I throw a fireball at it? You sure can. Let me look up fireball and see the range. Oh, I think it's going to be. I believe it's two hundred forty. Two forty, okay. Yep, it is two forty. Yeah, you sure can. Uh, so 5d6 worth of damage, and I'll see if it makes a save. So you're going to cast Fireball with it. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> hey, it failed its save. So how much damage? Nineteen. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> You see this white dragon coming down towards you at, at this point after it let out its its yell from its mouth and it's coming down at you in, in pretty much a very forceful way, in a very offensive way. You see this fireball erupt from your companion cinders, the rest of you. I don't know what reaction you will have to it, but you can tell us in just a moment. You see this fireball shoot into the sky and explode into this white dragon as most of it starts turning red. You see it crash down into the snow, maybe 30 feet from you, as it starts trying to shake off some of itself. But you can tell that this fireball has taken quite a bit out of it. Will shoots um, arrows at it. All right, everybody roll D12. We're just going straight initiative and see what happens. And I'll, I'll ask you what you get. I'll go by a character in just a moment. So, seven. What did Jade get? Two. What about Carla? Twelve. Okay, Cinders. Roll D twelve. Let me find a D twelve. Yep, just straight D twelve. Sorry, I'm having trouble finding a D12. No trouble, I'll get ease. What'd that you get ease? Like, that looks like one. A one, okay. Great. one. That's great. That's what you need. What about Eve's? 12. And you got a seven wheel, correct? Those of you that have animal companions... As we start this out, what would you like your companions to do at this point? Defend. 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 All right. Stay. Everybody would get plus one to their AC then for that. 
But we start out with you, Cinders, as you completely hit the mark on this white young white dragon and have knocked it out of the skies. It's it's just imploded into the ground, you know, and snow and ice is flying up and it's 30 foot away from you and it appears to be severely injured. So tell me, Cinders, what would you like to do as your first? Um, what? I'm not sure if I can get to the web spell fast enough. What does web do? Uh, let me look real quick. You could send a web to it and try to web it up. Um, let's see what the distance is on that. 30 feet. Yeah, it's about 30 feet from you, so you would know that you could hit it. Um, you would basically probably try to entangle it enough to maybe it wouldn't move to help. Yeah, I think I want to web it. All right. Your web goes off because it's just barely in range. Which area would you like to web of, the, of this? Just try to web it against various anchor points. So that it holds it holds the thing in place, holds the dragon in place. If if there's if there's anchor points near it. Yep, sure. Your 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 web goes off the way you want it, and seems to hopefully restrain it enough to to deter it enough to see what happens. Jade, you're next. Um. <clears throat> Greyfinch is gonna basically say, uh. Yeah, is, is this dragon evil or something? And he's not going to actually attack it. He's just going to draw right. a sling. As you say that, Jade, you see this white dragon. It is severely, severely injured. Start moving and trying to force itself up from this web as it takes its turn in this round trying to, to break loose from this web. Will, we're up to you. You're muted, Yang. We'll skip over Will as we go to Carla and Eves. Both of y'all are on 12. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, I can now. Can you hear me? Can yeah. Now. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, he lets out his arrow. He rolled 18 on the die with the bonuses. That's 21. Oh, yeah, that hits. Cool. Uh, is it 1d6 with the longbow? A longbow will be a d6 plus one. That's pl three plus one, four. Tell me how your arrow impales and goes through this web enough, and tell me where it hits this young white dragon to where it falls to the ground and is not moving now. As soon as the um, dragon's entangled, his arrow is released from his bow, it flies, and right on the bullseye, well, actually, the dragon's eye. It pierces through it and uh, lodges itself uh, in its skull. And, uh, yep, that's how he does it. You see the blood, the red, start trickling in the white snow, covering this white snow and the burned flesh from this fireball. Carla and Eves, how do y'all react as you see the dragons not moving at all now? Cool. <laughs> I to his knees and start sobbing. Well, <laughs> that fireball has killed a dragon. Carla is going to uh, take her spear and uh, and run over to it. And she's not gonna she's not gonna take any chances. <clears throat> You're able to spear into it and stay out of the web yourself enough. But as you spear into it, it doesn't flinch. It doesn't move. You can tell that the the arrow from the marksman ranger has has finished the one HP that it had left. Okay, uh, Carla will take her knife and uh, slit its throat. And uh, and now they have a dragon. They do. They have killed a young dragon. Shout out to you, Daniel Norton. I used your random deal, and what did we roll? A dragon. Because <laughs> Daniel always rolls dragons on random encounters, so this is for you, Daniel. Woo -hoo. <laughs> All right. Uh, Young's daughter is excited about this. Yes, she is. <laughs> um. Yeah, so uh, how big is this thing? You would tell it's a very young, immature. I mean, it's not very old at all. It's probably 
maybe 20 feet long. I mean, it's, it's a small one. Right. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to think, can we transport this? No, you mean, uh, you want to cut pieces up or what do you want to do? Tell me. I mean, like if possible, I would really like to just take the whole thing back to the village because, you know, we could have dragon meat for days, A, and B, be able to, like, take the scales and stuff more, you know, more like that. Like, I want to be able to skin it and stuff. That would be for you and your party to decide what your mission is, I guess, at this point. You would know it would be a pretty good task to get it back to the deal. It might not be a impossible, but that's up to y'all to decide what you want to do at this point, I guess. Maybe we could bring it on the way back. Maybe we yeah, should finish maybe. this first mission. We should bring it up into the mountains because if the orcs are hungry enough to eat dogs, they will definitely enjoy a feast of dragon. No, we're not. We're not going to let people eat that. Uh, let orcs eat this. Um, all right, Carla would like to reach into the thing's mouth, and uh, and. Um, if she can, she wants to pull a tooth from its mouth uh, to keep as a trophy, just in case the body goes missing. Yeah, Carla, well, I, don't think that's the, I don't think that's the white fang that the mayor was looking for. <laughs> 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 that's white fang's not for the mayor, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I should probably <laughs> mention that uh, that Carla has like a lot of homemade jewelry that are like made out of different kinds of bones. Like on the front of her uh, her fur, fur cloak is a small skull from like a goblin, probably. Yeah, do a three d six strength and let me know if you get equal to or under. Um, I made under by four points. You're able to finagle and, and wiggle your a tooth out, sure. Nice. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put that in my uh, in my uh, my large leather bag, and uh, yeah. Oh, I had a pair of tongs. I could have used tongs to get that out. Oh well. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So now I have that in case the body goes missing. Yeah, as y'all uh, look over the uh, dragon that you were able to kill without taking any damage yourselves, uh, it's getting very dark now. Uh, the rangers probably finished the, the uh, shelter and stuff for the night. You start hearing, hearing the howling of wolves coming from the mountains itself, but it seemed to be some distance at this point. What would y'all like to do the rest of the night as you set up your camp and any type of um, watch system you want to do? Um, let's see. Uh, uh, skip me for now. Eyes will take the first watch. He'll sit on okay. top of the dragon, absorb <laughs> what little heat is left in it. As he sobs, occasionally howling back at the wolves. Perfect. Who would like to go second? I, I, I'm going to feed the dog. Uh, I'll take the second watch. And uh, when he's taking the watch, he's going to take a uh, scale off of the dragon and put it in his pocket. Yeah, you can do that on your second watch. Um, I recover spells and, and maybe take a... Maybe take a scale later. <laughs> Who wants to take third watch in? Carla will go take third watch. That'll be fine. And uh, during her watch, uh, she's going to take... Um, I'm trying to think if she could possibly have some like leather string or something. I'm not seeing anything here that like that she could use that. Uh, she basically just wants to make a necklace out of that tooth she took if she can. If you're asking for leather, Ives will volunteer some. He's got mm. some leather thongs. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, she'll just take a strip of leather. Who wants fourth um, watch and fifth then to round us out? 
if, if I've reco if I've recovered spells by then, I'll maybe maybe I'll take a watch with someone. Yeah, I'll put you on fifth then, because that would be the morning as the morning rises. Bill, so let's gonna take leave. the fourth watch. Yeah, Will will take fourth. Ives, you're sitting on the dragon and keeping your watch as the <clears throat> it gets colder as the night progresses, of course. But on your watch, it goes by very uneventful. Nothing happens. Jade, whatever you want to do on your watch, you can do. Nothing happens. You hear some howling of the wolves off farther in the mountains again. Carla, you're able to take the leather that uh, the druid has given you and make your little uh, necklace, whatever you want to make, and nothing goes by. You you hear nothing, absolutely no howling, no nothing, as you've heard others talk about the howling of the wolves. Nothing, nothing happens on yours at all. Will, we come up to you. You, you hear some howling of the wolves on your watch sometime during it, and it appears like maybe a pack or a group of them has, has gotten a little bit closer to your count, maybe probably drawn in maybe by the smell of the uh, dragon meat. But you won't actually see any, though. As you tell that and progress on and tell Cinders as she relieves you, Will, you tell her about it, and Cinders, through your shift, you hear absolutely nothing. Whatever... Whatever Will told you, and as far as a wolf pack being close, you hear nothing to indicate that at all as the morning sun starts to rise. And anybody that lost uh, one point of constitution as the morning sun rises, make me a saving throw again. Just those that lost the point before. I passed. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't make it again. If you fail again, you're still at the minus one for today also then. If you passed, you can take away your minus one and put it back. It's a new morning. And it's not your imagination. The dead dragon's still laying out there in the snow with blood covered everywhere. And things are still a trail going up in the mountains as y'all decide what you would like to do this morning. I take a white dragon scale. Yeah, you can cut you off one easily. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, I, I feed the dogs again. <laughs> Carla um, comes out of the egg, uh, the the igloo and 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 is just stretching real big and yawning, <clears throat> and uh, she's feeling better. Would, I haven't killed that uh, dragon. She would have liked some dragon steak, though. Yeah, <clears> but, might, uh, as well, might as well all feast on some of the dragon steak and give some to the dogs. Um, but uh, she's going to take some, since she's waking up and everything, uh, she, she's going to take uh, some dried beef and some uh, onion she has, and she uh, she kind of puts it together, and she dips it in that wine from earlier, and then eats it. Okay. Unless anyone objects, I'm going to have some dragon steak. I won't object. I, as far as I'm concerned, you killed the dragon. Okay. I would, we'll you know, if yeah. you feel like sharing. Oh, yeah, I share. Absolutely mm. great. Fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, I have some dragon steaks, too. I'm painting blessings on the side of the uh, white dragon. I share with the dog, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. As y'all get your morning started and prepare to follow the uh, trail on up and further in the mountain, um, both the ranger and um, Carla, the uh, berserker, you can both give me a D6 again. Is there's been no fresh snow or anything happen overnight, so it appears there's a lot of tracks still leading up there. But if you can give me a D6, four, five. Yep, all y'all see is the the trail of the uh, sleds that are probably you would hope would be Pelly's. I'd keep going track up too. Yep. How about it, Ives? Can you help them out? No. <laughs> ah. Yep, there's there's a dog sled trail going up over in the mountains. No no doubt about it. But as y'all prepare that morning to, to leave out, 
and hit up that way. We'll take us about a five minute bowel break and come back and see where day two leads us then. Excellent. Sounds great.
All right, I'm back. Yep, I see you. How about Alex? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I know you never go anywhere. I actually did this time. Oh, goodness, you broke the protocol. I did. My uh, girlfriend is rearranging the house a little bit, so I went to go check it out, and then I went to go check on my bunny. She's still a brat, so that's good. I see Mike. I heard yawn. What about Kristen? I'm Barack. Sounds good. I think that's everybody. Y'all gonna have to you gonna have to do something on y'all's uh tracking checks. You're gonna have to improve you're gonna have to get the monk to do it, I guess. Hey, if you let me roll my uh monk ability as tracking, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. You Track start out on the second second Track morning. <laughs> And you start your sled teams further up this mountain pass. You able to send your owl on up cinders. You're able to send her out that morning, and she comes back and is making a commotion towards you that you know would signal something. You know something's not right ahead. Okay, I'll let the others know. You continue moving forward. Um, Will, I guess you're probably still in the lead with the lead sled. Is that correct? Yep. You'll notice at first then, Will, as you come around a little bend and continue to follow the uh, sled trail of Pelly and her team, you see uh, two overturned sleds up there. You don't see any dogs still attached to them, but you see two overturned sleds off of in the snow, snow, bank, snow bank there off the trail. He approaches closer to it to investigate. Yeah, as you continue to move forward to him, Will, closer to him, you see the um, three bodies laying there. You can recognize one of them as being the uh, constable of the town. And then you recognize the two kind of hooligans that Carla had, had known maybe from the tavern. What's the constable doing here? If I had to take a guess, I'd say sleeping. More importantly, who killed the people that I was going to kill? <laughs> oh, dear. I just Carla's look around. Gonna, Carla's going to search their one? bodies. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dred. Did you say something? I, I was just going to look around to see if he can tell just by tracks and what's happened, what actually happened. Yeah, Ives, as, as you and Will both, you know, were probably looking for that as uh, the berserkers more worried about maybe finding a few coins on their bodies. Um, you notice that there appear to be arrows sticking out of the, the bodies or, or, or been broken off as they fell into the... Um, Deal in both the uh, the ranger and the druid both roll me a d6. If you get a one or two, let me know. That is a two. Perfect. What about you, Will? 
Yeah, he gets a two also. Perfect. Both of y'all at the same time, it snaps to you. As you see these arrows, you know that these arrows come from a group. And as soon as you say it, senders would probably know, or maybe stories of them, you would know these come from a race of elves that live in these mountains known as the Ice Elves. You would know they are a very chaotic, evil type of elf that have pretty much no respect for any other type of, of race or creature of anything. ASS elves or yeah, ass, ice, 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 ice. Like ice. Okay. Ice, ice elves. Okay. Yep, an ice elf. Yes, these these are worse than humans. Very much worse than humans. I heard that they take children away from their parents. The cold bastards. That's what they are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> is Pele here? Or or is she the only one missing? Her body, you do not see it. Uh, only She's the only one missing. Okay. So, the, so they killed two of the three. Um... Well, they actually killed three. There's th there's three bodies here: the two hooligans and the constable. Th but they killed two of the th of the three uh, sleds. Yeah, there's one sled that is missing. Correct. Did I find anything on the bodies? Are there dead dogs? The dogs are missing too. There's no dogs around. Just the three bodies and the sled. Did, did I find anything on the bodies? I'm trying to get to you, Crystal. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You are going to find between a lot of the three, you find six silver pieces. That's it. You find their weapons are gone. Whatever weapons they would have had, they're gone also. If they're wearing any armor, which would probably be just leather armor, it's still on them. But you find the weapons on them or around them anywhere. Hey, What's... all their uh, weapons are gone, I say, as I'm pocketing them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just say, uh, hey guys, all their weapons are gone as I'm pocketing that silver. Okay. I think well, I think we I think we found at least signs of trouble, if not the ones that took Ice Fang. They all belong to Pele's group. No? Correct. The three bodies, yeah. They were all 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 three of these people were with her group. But then where's Pele? He start, he starts looking around for Pele's tracks. There's no need to roll for any of you here as you easily see tracks that are leading on down. It, it's very distinguishable. They're not trying to hide them at all. As you can tell, the tracks are leading off and would appear probably the sled is, is being driven by one of these elves probably or, or maneuvered off and they continue on down to the uh, the way you're going, the trail that you're continuing on. The third sled, or the or the two, or the or the first two sleds. Just the third, the third sled itself is the other two sleds are here overturned. Yes, it's just the one sled okay. that's leading. So they off. may have. So they may have. So they probably have Pele's sled. Okay. I mean, I assume that she had just gotten away. Yeah. She could be hiding. She could be hiding. She may have abandoned the sled and they, they took her sled. Is there signs of of foot travel separate from the, from the sled? There, there, is, there is some foot travel. Some tracks that you would tell are humanoid travel and probably smaller frame, which you would definitely think would be probably the elves. And, but you also see a foot travel of a larger footprint. And they're moving off in the same direction of this trail as the sled has went. Is the larger track seem like it's being dragged, or, or uh, is there any blood trails or anything like that? 
there's no blood trail at all, and it, it would appear maybe these tracks are probably somewhat resisting, somewhat. I'm sorry, uh, I was talking to my mom about uh, what I miss. You're still finding more tracks leading off. Uh, okay. Um, do I need to roll anything to see if nope. I can? Okay. Um, so we're just following them now? Not yet. You're still trying to determine. We should go rescue those dogs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we should go rescue the dogs for sure. Seems like Pele's been captured. Well, perhaps she'll get a taste. She's either of what captured or they're following her. Well, we know that she won't do a flex off. So, if these yes. elves enjoy flex offs, uh, they're probably just going to kill her, which is yeah. fine. Uh, we need the dogs. Yeah, I think she, I think they would be envious of her muscles. Well, yeah. you know they're going to be envious of mine then. Regard regardless. They're in that direction. If we go in that direction, we better be ready to encounter some elves. Yeah. The dogs, the the elves, and, and Pele are all in that direction. The snow elves. That's what I mean. The, the, the snow elves. Snow elves, Pele, and the, and the dogs are all, all in the same direction. And, and I can kill the elves? Oh yeah, nice, nice. Uh, Carla pulls out her uh, her axe and gives the blade a kiss. Only if we could have some eyes in the sky. We got the uh, we got the owl. Can you talk to the owl? Yes, I can. Is that even possible? Yes, it is. Seems like am I, am I am I am I am I correct, Tony? Are you using a spell to talk to it, or you're just wanting to like just naturally have a, a some is, type of telepathy with it? Is it possible to have a natural telepathy with it? Yeah, I mean, I would say maybe simple words. You know, that's fine. Yeah, simple words. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. Danger. Sounds like witchcraft. That's exactly could, what it is. We could have the eyes on the in the sky, and if they see anything, perhaps the elves lay an ambush for us. Then we could be warned. Yeah, send in the drone. They all look at you, Carla. Like, what word did you just use? There are no bees Carla, out here. It's Carla. too cold. Carla looks back at them like she has no idea what she said either. She did. I mean, half this time, Gray Finch has no idea what she's talking about, or she's talking about murder, and he's not super into it. Yeah, Will we, we'll just responded thinking that she was talking about bee drones or ant drones. Uh, he just says, There are no bees around here. <laughs> no, of course there's not. All right, let's go. Yeah, how do y'all want to proceed as far as any particular who's going first or will um, you continue? Will we'll, we'll let Spectre sniff out the trail first. You know, so with the combination of uh, the eyes in the sky and the uh, dog that's, um, you know, sn sniffing out the trail. Eyes um, in the sky he, and nose on the ground. That's right. <laughs> that's what's happening. Your group we continues. Continues Sorry. the trail that, that you're following, and you know, sure enough, you can see the the sled, the one sled tracks as, as you're going and, and, and following the best you can. You also see foot traffic going probably along this sled. You probably travel a good um, twenty or thirty minutes probably as you continue along, and it's starting to be a lot, a lot of snow starting to fall. Nothing to really affect you, but a lot of snow is starting to come down. And you hear the rush of, uh, of some water that is moving, maybe not a fast moving water, but you can tell there's a stream ahead or something. And sure enough, as you come around the bend, and much like it was on this uh, cover photo of the event itself, you, you come up on this very wide, probably 30, 40 foot wide or more of uh, this river that's flowing through the mountains. And 
uh, part of it's broken up where there's these ice flows and these chunks of ice that are, are moving down at itself, as you notice that. But you also notice something else that there probably was at one time a fairly decent rope bridge across here that one person could walk across, but it's been cut. As you maneuver and get closer, you can see this rope bridge has been cut and it, there's no bridge, rope bridge to walk across these ice flows again. Um, uh, Carlo right quick wants to check the ground. She wants to make sure they're not like on a river bed or something itself. Like, I mean, not a river bed, but like not on a lake or something. You can, you know what I'm saying? You're yeah. still on solid ground where you're at. I mean, you, you can definitely tell I mean, where the river starts. And because, like I say, part of it's frozen, but part of it's not. There's those big ice flows and chunks that are kind of floating down itself. But yeah, you're on solid ground where you're at. Okay. I just want to make sure we weren't on like a, a lake that was frozen in one area and not others. Nope, not um, you. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, so, no bridge, huh? No, you can tell, but it appears this rope bridge has been cut recently, but it's not, not fallen in from uh, disrepair or age or whatever. It appears someone has definitely cut it. Uh, Carla has a grappling hook and 80 feet of hemp and rope. rope. Uh, could she possibly, like, uh, throw this across and then, like, you know, tie it off somewhere? So uh, grappling have hook have and a, silk, uh, at 100 feet of silk rope. Maybe we could combine that. Yeah, I mean, could you combine push that? Bridge out of the water and then just reattach it. I don't. You would don't, have. You would have to. You would have to. It would take some time to actually try to get it back up to working order. Could the yeah. could the uh, elf think, could the elf fetch it? What was the question? I'm sorry. Could the elf fetch the the end of the? Would that be too too heavy to for the owl to fetch the end of the rope and bring it up? The owl maybe could bring it somewhat out of the water, maybe. But as far as trying to, to maintain it for some time to for y'all to reattach it, you know, it'd be pretty difficult probably for an owl because this is a pretty heavy, you know, sturdy rope bridge. You could tell at one time. Will has yeah. rope and grappling how, hooks also. Yeah. How far down is it? You mean in the water? Yeah. Like how far down is it? Do, like, do, can we tell where it's at down there? You can see parts of it from the from the uh, side that you're on, but I mean, as far as on out, the further it goes, it's going. Yeah, you can't totally tell, but on your side, I mean, you can see parts of it in the water. Okay, but like how, how far how far water, down how far down are they? Is is it over a hundred feet down? Could we go down across and up? How deep is it? That's what I'm trying to ask. I guess the water itself, you have no idea on how deep the water is. Well, I'm saying you said we could see parts of the bridge down in the water, right? Yeah, on your side, you can tell, but, you know, it's probably, on where well, you're standing on the shoreline on your side, it's probably four or six foot deep, you would think. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was thinking of this wrong. So the bridge has been cut on the other side, but we could, like, pull the bridge up, right? No, the bridge has been cut on both sides. There is no bridge at all any side that's, that's structured in. I mean, it, it's been completely cut and fallen right. into the... So you said we could see the bridge down the water. How far down in the water is it? Like how many feet down is it? On your side, like I said, about four to six feet probably you would think. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Okay. I have, you, have, you have no idea how deep it is on further out, of course. Okay. Uh, I have six. Okay. Is it like a solid bridge, like solid wood? Or is it like, uh, rope, like a rope? It's made out of heavy okay. rope. I, I, I thought I heard you say that. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. heavy rope. I have an iron chain. I have six foot. I have six feet of iron chain. So can I put my grappling hook on the end of that iron chain and dip the iron chain down in the water to make it easier to fish out? Because you can try. Yeah, you can try to chain do that. Would be better than rope, right? So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the grappling hook on the end of the uh, iron chain, and I'm gonna toss the grappling hook down the water. It'll just sink because it's a grappling hook and an iron chain. Uh, and then I want to try and attempt to like maybe swing it under, you know, a rope or a piece of wood or something. Yeah, and you're not surprised as you start to do that. And I don't know what the others are doing while she's doing this, but it doesn't surprise you probably at all. Maybe a little bit as an arrow strikes into you and you take four points of damage. It comes from the other side. Nice. 
So if we want to, everybody can just roll initiative and we'll go from there. And let's see, Jade, what did you get? Ten. All right. What about Carla? One second. I was trying to mark my HP. All right. Uh, three. All right. Uh, what about Cinders? Trying to find a D12. All right. What about you, Eve? Found it. Three. Three, okay. Ten. Ten for ease. Six. And six for our ranger. Carla, you and Cinders both have uh, three, so um, we'll go with you, Carla, as you're struck with this arrow from the other side. And looking at the arrow real quick, you can tell it appears us to be the same type of arrows that were killed the uh, other sled people. If anybody, what, what about animal companions? I'm sorry, what about animal companions? What are they doing this round? Defend. Defend. All right. All right. Defend. Same Sounds with good. Carla, what would you like to do as you're struck with this arrow? It damages you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yell, Ah, son of a motherfucking... Whoever shot me with that, you're dead. Your family's dead. Your friends are dead. You're all going to die. Now, how do I get across this goddamn river? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't really do anything else. I don't know how to get across the river. But, I mean, like, I take my axe out, and I'm angry and upset. That's not to say I'm going into a berserk. I'm just, uh, I'm just upset. Right. What about you, Cinders? What would you like to do? As your friend Carla is going on a rampage and screaming out and with an arrow sticking out of her. Is there any way to look for any num you know, number of targets across the way? Yeah, you're looking over there. And also your owl had reported back to you just before y'all started this and said it, it didn't see anything at all. But as you look over, you know, there's a slight rise in, in, in stuff of a rock formation and things, but at this point you don't see anything or hear anything at all. You, you have no idea where this arrow come from. Okay. I'm Besides trying not to be shot with arrows, um, I'm trying to spot for targets, and if I can get a bearing on targets, then you know, right. either point them out to other people or maybe launch spells. But so, my main yep. my main point is to point them out to other people. Sounds good as you're looking and, and continue to look and, and hopefully maybe be able to spot some movement that would indicate uh, some type of enemy or whatever. We go down to you, Will. Can he shoot arrows? You can, but what you gonna shoot at? Tell me. Oh, uh, does he not see the L's on the other side? You don't see anything. You have no idea if it's an L for an orc or a dragon, or you don't see. You, you have no visual on anything at this point. He says, "Take cover. Let's retreat from here." Okay. You want to move? You want to move back, Will? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, he signals to others to move back until uh, they can indicate, you know, they can identify where the arrows are coming from. Yep, and as you do that, you see or hear the string bow of some more arrows flying. One shoots towards you, Jade, and misses pretty bad. Oh, wow. Carlo, you're hit again for another two points of damage as another arrow strikes into you. Ooh, that's not good at all, Cinders. They hit you, this arrow, with a nat 20. You're going to take um, eight points of damage as this arrow strikes into you, Cinders. Eves, as you're looking around, maybe whatever, an arrow flies by you and misses. Will, as you're trying to move back and get out of the way, an arrow flies by you and misses pretty bad. As we are to you, Eves and Jade. Both on 10. Eves walks out towards the river 
and waves his hand and then shouts out, uh, we mean you no harm. We are only looking for a lost dog. Once we find the dog, we will leave you alone. Have you seen it? All right. What about Jade? Uh, well, I'm going to take the ranger's advice and back off. And I'm also going to try and see if I can find somewhere to hide. Like, you know, yeah, there's, there, yeah, there's some rock rock outcroppings and stuff the way y'all come to. Some smaller ones, not as not as large. It appears on the other side, but there are some that you can try to go behind. All right, then I successfully hide. All right, we'll go to the next round for initiative. And what did you get, Jade? Two. All right. What about Carla? Nine. All right, Cinders. Three. What about Eves? Four. Man, all on the line. What about a wheel? Eleven. Jade, start us out. Uh, I mean, I stick my head up just enough to see if I can't find something. You know, do I see an elf, an orc, a dragon with a Roll giant me a D6. size longbow? <laughs> a three. Nope, you don't see anything, but you're pretty sure the trajectory of that arrow but it is coming from somewhere on that, that rocky outcropping on the other side, but you don't see anything right now. Cinders, what about what would you like to do as you've been hit... Tremendously by that arrow that sunk into you just a moment ago. I thought I was in cover, but I make sure I'm in cover. You want to move back to the rocks towards where Jade is? I, I thought that's where I was, but I make sure that's where I am. I make sure I'm in cover. All right. Yep, you move back enough to, to give you some more protection as we go up to you, Eves. You're muted, Matt. Oh, sorry. Uh, Eves will again <laughs> appeal to them. He'll take another step out and will even step into the river and says, all we look for is just the dog. I, I just need the dog bag. <laughs> you can have whatever else. I'll take the dogs. I also have a pair if you want to trade. A pair? And dogs. All right. As you're saying, <coughs> excuse me, um, you're saying this, Eves, and you're standing in the water as everyone else is pretty much backed away, maybe except for Carla. And <coughs> Will's directing people. There's no doubt that this time you'll see the arrows as they come. Wait, is you. Carla not going to turn? Oh, wait. They're ahead of you, Carla. You wrote um, a nine. They wrote an eight. You see yeah, these arrows? I, 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 look, for a second, I got. I was thinking about how Daniel does initiative, and I'm. I'm really sorry. That's okay. You see these arrows coming towards you, Eve. Two arrows miss. Do we One. see? Do we see where the arrows are coming from yet? You have not, but everybody's six and two. Eves, you get hit by with one arrow and you take six damage as this one arrow strikes into you as you're standing in the river. And as you do, Eves, you see the four arrows coming from this rock outcropping. And you see a silhouette of somebody standing up real quick and shooting. And, and you can tell they're almost camouflaged by what you would know, maybe their natural color, their white hair, and their very pale, almost bluish skin. But you also see they're wearing something else to help them camouflage. But you can definitely tell where the arrows are coming from. I will point it out. <laughs> you! Lobbing arrows! Carla, you're being pointed out where the arrows are coming from. You see the small silhouette of some type of humanoid figure that's jumping up and shooting a bow and ducking back down. Uh, yeah, when she gets hit with this other uh, arrow, the two points of damage... Uh, she lets out a like a big roar 
and she says, you're dead. Your friends are dead. Your family's dead. Your fucking pets are being skinned alive. Your mom's a fucking whore. You suck at life. The whole world hates you. You're going to hell. Live with it while you can. And she's just going to charge through the river, and she is going to make her way to those elves as fast as she possibly can with her hand axe out, getting ready to go into a berserker rage. How do you want to um, proceed through the river? You tell me, and let's see what happens. I'm I'm just going to run through it, and if I can't, and if I uh, and if I have to swim, I'm going to attempt to swim. I am running straight through the river. Make I mean, me a Constitution save at minus four, or I mean a regular save at minus four. Okay. Nat twenty. <laughs> you move through the river. As it starts to grasp you and almost pull you down, and your rage is, is building as you maneuver across and you grab a hold of one of these ice flows and work yourself up on it, and you're able to step across and get across somehow on the other side of this bank. And that's what you're going to do this turn. Will, we go to you. Will says, Is he mad? And is she even crazier? She's jumping into the ice, ice, icy water, uh, trying to swim across while there are arrows being fired at her. And then he, he uh, goes up there and tries to uh, grab Eves and get him out of the way first. Eves, are you going to try to resist him moving you out of the water? No, he could do whatever he wants with me. Yeah, he, yeah, he picks him up and tries to drag him back out of the range of the arrows. All right. You're able to do that on your <clears throat> turn this round, and we'll go to the next round. Of, I guess animal companions are still doing defend. Unless somebody changes, let me know. Yes, defend. All right, everybody roll with D12. We'll start with you, Jade. What did you get? An 11. How about Carla this time? Two. Cinders? Five. Eves? Twelve. And Will? Uh, twelve. Wow. This is going to be surprising when we get to that number. Carla, lead us out. Okay. Um, so how far away are these things? You saw that it's probably going to take you probably to get up there to maneuver up these rocks and stuff. It's going to take you a couple rounds to actually get up there to where you saw the arrows come from. Damn. Ah, uh, okay. Then, um, I mean, that, that's all I do. I'm just, I'm rushing for them. Uh, I'm climbing up the rocks and, and everything. All right. Sounds perfect to me. Cinders, what would you like to do? Are they in range of the fireball? 240? Yeah, and you could definitely shoot a fireball in that general direction, you would think, and, and, and get get to where you saw them come from, yeah. Do I think it'll hit a couple of them? You you would think, knowing your, your uh, magics and stuff, you would know there's going to be some type of protection for them that they, they, you know, behind these rocks, but you would think also the, the outburst of this fireball hitting is definitely going to cause some flame to go back and do some damage. You would definitely think that. Might hit a couple. Okay. Launch. So get Romy's get Romy some damage. Twenty. Twenty damage, okay. You see one of these figures stand up and like I say, you would recognize it then for sure as, as being one of these ice elves as you notice that they have this naturally white hair. And it's very pale, almost light blue skin. It helps them hide in the mountains. And they're also wearing some type of cloaks or some type of things to help them be camouflaged. You see him stand up, and you see the hair has been totally singed off of him. And his face has went from this pale blue to this burned skin as he tumbles and falls off of the rock and starts tumbling down towards you, Carla. As he is completely dead. You don't see anything happen to you any anything else, but you do notice one of them tumble down dead. Okay. 
I better stop his son alive for me. Jade, what would you like to do as you see this? Uh, I don't know if I can sling a sling shot that far. Uh, I mean, you could, but I mean, you don't see any target that's standing there. There's yeah, no well, what, visible target. I mean, I know there isn't a ready action, but that's what I want to do, basically. I want to wait until one pops up and then sling a sling at them. All right, perfect. That sounds good. We had three people going on 12. Them, Eves, and Will. So Eves and Will, tell me what y'all would like to do. Well, I'm still in Will's grasp, so it kind of depends what Will wants to do. <laughs> Well, Will would have left, you know, uh, set him down out of the range first, and then he rushes back to the shore to uh, lob an arrow towards where, where it's coming from. You can, but there's no target. You see no target, but, I mean, you can shoot an arrow that way and maybe try to lob it over in the direction if you'd like to. It's gonna, if you'd like. Yep. That's, what, right. that's exactly what he does. Sure. And uh, hold on. And you know with a bow, you actually 20. get two shots. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got a natural 20. How much damage on that? Oh, that's right. Roll me a... Wait a minute. Let me find a little chart. Here. Roll me a uh, DTN first. Six. All right. And uh, roll me a... Your bows get two shots, you know, so make your second shot. Okay. One. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. What's happening here? Tell me as you roll a one... Your bow string snapped, and you know next round if you're going to use your bow, you're going to have to restring it real quick. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, your first arrow takes true flight as it goes over. You actually hear, you know, a murmur even with the water and the ice flow. You can still hear a quick murmur, knowing that you definitely hit something. Roll damage. Well, you said six, didn't you? How many ago? Uh, that was one d ten, right? Yeah, but I, th I thought I heard you say. No, yeah, that's right. Roll damage. I'm sorry. That's right. It was on the yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I my rolled, fault. My fault. I, no, no. Actually, uh, I rolled one d10 and I rolled six, but I thought the uh, damage was one one d6 plus yeah, one. Yeah, you're wrong, bro. One d6 plus one. Yeah. Oh, oh. So we upgraded the damage die to one uh, d10 instead of one d6. Is that what we did? No, no. That one d10 was for your critical hit. True, but you, you're right. You didn't roll damage. Oh, so okay. D6 plus one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, no. One damage plus one. Two points. You still hear a cry, though, as you know, because your arrow probably struck somebody. Just hope, We just hope it's not Pelly. Or Carla. Ah! <laughs> Eves, you've been released from the grip of Will. What are you going to do? You're muted, Mike. I'll run out towards the river again. <laughs> say, there are very unreasonable people coming to kill you. We just want the dog back. Perfect. We'll go to the next round. Unless animal companions are changing, we'll show them as defending. So, what did you get, uh, Jade? Uh, three this time. Uh, Carla. Uh, I got a 12. Cinders? Oh, we're rolling initiative? Okay. Yep, we're the next round, yep. 11. All right, what about Eves? Four. And Will. Seven. All right, lead us out again, Jade. I mean, I'm just going to wait for one to stick their head up, and I'm going to sling a sling at them if I can. Perfect. Eves, you're standing there in, in by the bank and going back into the water again. What are you going to do? I'm going to plunge into the river and see if I can cross. Ooh. All right. Um, roll me a save at minus four. Ooh, that's not good. That's, I missed it by two. Missed your save by two? Yep. 
you, you think you're sure-footed, maybe almost as Carla was, and you start to reach for one of those ice floes to maybe pull yourself up on and, and move and dance across, but you slip off of it. As you do, you'll take three points of damage as you just go into the cold of the stream, and you see it's starting to pull you on down a little bit. The, the current's not super fast, but it's starting to pull you down further downstream just a little bit as we go to you, Will, as you see this happen. Will sees it and chases after Eves again. Uh, he's trying to rescue the fella. So uh, he runs after him and tries to grab him. Are you going to go out into the, the water too? Yeah. Roll me a save at minus four. Uh, he fails. Nine. Whew. You'll take two points of, of water of this cold damage as you splash. Now you're starting to go down the river too, falling right behind the eaves as you're maybe reaching out for him. But he's quite 10, 15 foot ahead of you. Cinders, you see two of your companions floating down the river. All right. I go. Go out and, th and throw an end of the rope out to them the, with, with the grappling hook, try not, trying not to hit them. Try not to hit them with the grappling hook and knock them up. Trying not to hit them with the grappling hook, which would knock them unconscious, but trying to get it near them so that they can um, catch it, you know, so I can pull them in. All right. Perfect. Show me, uh, roll me, um, if you, you have a bonus, you said on your decks, right? A plus one? Yeah. Roll me um, 3d6 against your deck score. And um, let me know if you get equal to or under. And you can actually minus one off your roll. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I made it. How, how, by how much? I mean, how good? Um, by two. By two, okay. You can pick which one of the two is going to catch your rope, if you like, and, and tell me how they catch it and all that. Um... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll which which one gets it. Uh, 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 low, it's Eve's. Odd, uh, it's. Right. I mean, high, low, it's Eve. Uh, high, it's it's Will. All right. Um, low it was e Eve's. Eve's, you're able to snag under this grappling hook and this rope, as the elf is trying to hopefully save you and pull you back in at this point. We jump up to you, Carla, as you're making your way up to this rocky outcropping where you saw the one guy tumble and fall from taking the fireball damage. But you also hear maybe the, the shouts and stuff as you look back and you see your two companions in the river floating down it. Um, it's impossible that I'm looking back because I'm still trying to climb the mountain. Uh, could I maybe do a survival and see if I can find a faster way up the mountain? Like if you know, I could, the, you know what the end of this real quick. Uh, you know at this end of this round, though, this is your second one. You'll be at the top of the outcropping, right? Okay, okay. So at the end of this round, I will be. Yep, you'll make it. To All right. So uh, yeah. So I. So I'll just uh, play it out that Carla, she, uh, she runs up the rest of this mountain and grabs the last rock and she flings her the pointies out of her axe into the ground. So that she has a better grip and she pulls herself to the top of this. Um, and she hears her companions and everything, but I mean, it's not registering her right now. Right now, murder, murder, murder is on the brain. All right. We'll start off next round and see what you see once you get to the top. Everybody can roll the D12. Uh, what did you get, Jade? I got a one, which is going to be All pointless because right. I'm not going to do anything again. <laughs> you got that sling ready, Carla. It's so ready. Uh, Carla rolled a six. All right, Cinders. Three. Three, that's good. Uh, Eves. Nine. And Will. Three. Jade, you're going to still have the rock ready, right? Well, okay. So, 
Do I see somewhere down the river where it's because they're going to go under an ice sheet now, aren't they? Possibly could, because I mean, there's, there's definitely sheets of ice off and on through the river. Well, I'm going to try and run ahead, like sprint down to where I think Wills is going to be soon, and then try and fish him out of the river. You got some kind of rope or something, or something uh, you use your shop, or? I have, I have rope. Like I, I will use rope if rope makes sense, or if I'm at the edge and it looks like I can just grab him, I'll grab him. No, whatever yeah, the topography you, you, of the you, situation looks like. Yeah, you definitely would think you can can maneuver enough to maybe get ahead of him, but you you would think for sure you're going to have to probably throw some type of rope out to him to help him, or he's going to have to help pull himself in with you. All right. Um, I'm going to tie an iron spike to the end of 50 feet of rope because I don't have a grappling hook like everyone else. Yeah, yeah. roll me um, 3d6 on your decks, and do you have a modifier that might of the? Yeah, I've got a modifier. Yeah, so not minus one off the roll then. Uh, I rolled seven. Minus yeah, one so is you, six. So you got a, yeah, you did good, man. Will, we go to you next as you see this spike on this end of this rope coming towards you for you to grab. Yeah, he's now a, a drowning icicle, so <laughs> he reaches out, grabs it, and tries to pull himself out. Yeah, you're you're starting that way the best you can. As you go, we go back to you, Sanders. As you're helping pull Eves in, you're going to continue to do that. I'm taking. I'm going right? to pull, pull pull Eves in. All right, Carla, you're staying on top of this little outcropping of where you see the one ice elf fall and, and tumble down. When you get to the top, it's quiet. You see nothing at all. Well, how far away are those croppings we saw? You're you're standing on the top of, of where that ice elf tumbled down. So I mean, you're right there from where they were hiding behind. Evidently, you think, but you see nothing, hear nothing. What about no blood? Nope. Can I do a track and see if I can see if I can get some tracks? Yeah, try and see. All right. Five. Seems okay. like just disappeared into thin air. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here with my axe out and I'm just gonna listen. All right, sounds good. Eves, you're coming out of the water, right? Yeah, I'll come out of the water. You'll take two points of cold of more damage, HP damage, as you're coming out of the water. And we're pretty much out of initiative at this point. As you're being pulled out the wheel, you'll take two more points of damage also as you're being pulled out of this cold, icy water by the uh, half one. Carlo, we'll go back to you as, as your companions are being pulled out of the water and, and stuff and staying there in their freezing cold clothing and furs and stuff. But you're sitting there, Carlo, looking around. You don't hear anything. You don't see anything. It appears whatever tracks that they had there, you can see the tracks maybe where they were standing there, jumping up and shooting the arrows, but you don't see no tracks or anything leading off. Um, you see, you don't see Pelly. You don't hear her. You don't hear any dogs or anything. You never heard any noise of, of dogs barking or anything during the whole encounter. Uh, I'm going to let out a ferocious, angry roar that just shakes the mountains like just like like little pebbles and shit start falling down the edge and into the and into the water <laughs> below i'm like so mad and just echoes forever off into the distance <laughs> what about you four that are standing on the other side of where all this is going on with carla going into this Screaming shout fit. What are y'all gonna do is two of you are standing there soaking wet freezing to death I mean <laughs> Like chill <laughs> I mean honestly like I'm not gonna try and swim across the thing after I saw everyone who tried to almost die 
Yeah, I apologize immensely to everyone. I, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I, perhaps I was a bit hasty, but uh, that crazy woman, she's making me uh, do things I wouldn't normally do. I mean, I'm only thinking of the dogs at this point. And uh, he reaches into his pack and he'll bring out a little bag of cherries. And he goes, here, maybe this can help warm us. And he starts distributing cherries. Uh, you should all know that it's really hard to talk under the immense uh, roar of this yell that Carlos is letting out. Like you guys are like having to like shout as if you're on a B-52. That woman, she's making me do crazy things. Nah, I'm sure it's fine. You're pretty far away. Huh. I'm shouting she's crazy. <laughs> And you also know at the end of, of being out of combat that if there's your resting and stuff, if anybody wants to buy to try out the cherries. Yeah. Or if Sorry. you want to try to try to help somebody else buy and treat wounds, you we can do that. But if you want to treat your own wounds, you automatically get one D six back. Thank you. Uh, that would also include you two that fell in the river. You can you can I'll be nice and let you have some back. Two yeah, points I'll back. Try and help the old man. Excellent. All right. If you're going to do that, um, make a saving throw, Eves. If is is the halfling's going to try to help you bind some? Uh, failed by two. On the save? Yes. <laughs> uh, roll me a D three there, Alex, for making his wounds worse than they were. I'm gonna burn this D twenty. <laughs> uh, well, luckily I rolled a one, so there's that. All right. Take one point of damage, Mike. Another um, one. He's, he at one point is he's trying to help you, but whatever he did, something just made the mocks didn't teach him right up there. In the no, what line. happened was, uh, Griffin just like hold, hold still, hold still, hold. <laughs> Great, now look what you did. Yeah, now let me show you how to do this. <laughs> what what do the cherries do? They taste it good. Tastes delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were like good berries from D and D. Give one but... to Al. <laughs> He's not that handy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I thought Will you could needed... actually cure wounds. It, does Will need some more attention? I'm willing to give some attention to Will if he needs. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. the the reason why Will was completely quiet is because he was so frozen <laughs> at, at first with uh, with the immense cold, and when he climbed out, it was even colder. And when the barbarian woman started shouting, he's got the chills and he's unable to say anything. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Um, how much is that binding bind for, Tony? 1d6? Yeah, if you're doing your own 1d6. Okay. Holy shit. Uh, I yell, like, so well uh, that almost, it's almost like a magical spell gets cast over me as, like, all of my wounds just in, just heal. <laughs> and I actually uh, bound for six, and I had six wounds. You All scared right, your okay. injuries away. <laughs> yeah, I, I like 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 the rage is so strong. It's just like it's just like little smoke comes up from where I was like cut at and stuff. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> is your four standing on on the side that you come from? Is you're still standing there and binding wounds and uh, trying to bind wounds and things? Um, Will you um? You get to looking around and noticing something you didn't notice before when you first got here. You notice there's a trail that is leading off that did not go across this river itself. There appears to be a small foot trail that goes off, and you would notice by looking at some of these tracks that they appear to be orc tracks. It seems like we've done something stupid. There is a trail here, and there are orc tracks. And uh, and Will um, basically goes back to his dog and hugs him for a little while to keep himself warm. Pulls out some other clothes and uh, has a change of clothing before he does anything. I, I feed the owl. 
or if the owl feeds it's if the owl feeds herself the owl feeds herself all right she probably she probably be hunt, been, been hunting for herself but I give her a little snack yeah as you're all doing that and wheel points out these these what appear to be definitely orc tracks that are going off some trail along the side uh, Will, are you going to share that with Carla, who is on the other side of the river? Yeah, he's okay. going to shout across and say, Carla, there's a, there's a trail leading that way. And then he points to the direction of the trail. Uh, Carla is currently lifting rocks and, like, turning them over, trying to see if there are, like, tunnels in the ground that these elf bastards escaped through. You find nothing over there, Carla. It's like they just disappeared into thin ice. <laughs> okay. Uh, and just to reiterate, Carla, is since you're in your frenzy or whatever, not really, but just to reiterate, you see no tracks that appear to be any type of dog tracks or any more human tracks. They were all well, besides the elf tracks that we're sending right there. You see no bigger tracks at all. Just to reiter reiterate that in case you didn't hear that. I mean, she's already promised to kill them, their family, their friends, skin their pets. Uh, she did, yep. So, I mean, she's going to have to keep that promise. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be really hard. To, it would be really hard to, to get her to be convinced otherwise, probably. I mean, yeah. I mean, she can't find them. She could always come back for them later. So, okay. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know. Is there, now that I'm up there here, can I see any other way across the uh, river? The only way to get across the river is with your ingenuity that maybe you could think of. As you see the river flowing, you see nothing else that where it narrows that you could maybe jump across or anything. I mean, it's it's wide, but like I say, you see these these ice flows and thing that are moving down it itself. So okay. ingenuity, ingenuity is going to have to get you back across between you and your team. So if, if you're going to go back across, if you can get the, how you're going to do it. You can get the bridge on your side, and we can get the bridge on our side. Maybe we can stick it back to the ground on both sides. Yeah, it sounds good. So, I will being. Back in commission, uh, he restrings his bow, uh, ties one of the rope ends to his arrow, and shoots it across the river. All right. And tells Carla to, uh, uh, you know, secure it in one of the one of the things so that she could hold on to the a rope and and basically skid across the thin ice. Yeah, Carla's not going to go across thin ice. Uh, she she's back with her iron chain and her uh, her grappling hook, trying to fish the bridge out of the water. You're able to um, to pull up enough. Yeah, you're able to pull up that end of it on your side. If we're going to try to restring the the bridge, that's what I'm suggesting. Okay, let's try to restring the bridge. You guys are going to have to fish it up on your side. I can't. I've got it up on my side. You got to get it on your side. Okay. Let's try to let's let's try to fish out the 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 rope bridge on this side. All right. Well, you we've know, got the grappling you can, hook. You can eventually do that. It's going to take you quite some time to to do that. That's a good idea, but it's going to take you some time to do it. I mean, we're talking about you know, maybe an hour or two hours to get it safely. I mean, it can be done. I'm going to let you do it, of course, but I mean, just remember it's going to take some time to get it done. What We're time here to is find it? a dog, not to finish a building a bridge. I would say we oh. we have the rope, so let's have her climb on top of the rope or uh, hang on to it and come across. Yeah. Just yeah. run back through the water. I'm not an acrobat. She's a polywog. You did so well the first time. I would rather just take the time to go ahead and get the bridge back 
secure and safe, and then I can just walk across, and then there'll be a bridge there again. Right. Do you want us to do it safely rather than risk falling in? I mean, when I when I went the first time, I was pissed and going to kill some elves. I'm, I don't have incentive now. Well, you can be pissed because we're going to go kill some orcs. No, it doesn't work that way. Let's, the, elves, let's just... the elves deserve me being pissed at me. They shot me with arrows. Okay. Let's string the bridge up. Somebody shoot her with an arrow. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? No. Well, just shoot her. Raven is going to walk over. How about no? Raven is going to walk over and take Will's bow and give it to you. <laughs> Excellent. I will steady the bow the best I can with my shaky little arms. <laughs> Carl is trying to fish this uh, bridge out again. and I'm trying to fish the bridge out on, on this side. I don't even exactly. think I could pull the back this long, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're able, if that's what you want to do, Carla, and, and you're able to get the get the bridge up enough and rigged up enough that you were able to walk across it, and the time you you, you, you and your party do this um, and get back over, you know, it's been a couple of hours probably. Uh, you don't hear any more elves or no more arrows coming down. You and you know that it's getting pretty late that you would know you've probably got about an hour of sunlight left to follow this trail. Are we going to need to camp, guys? I mean, yeah. we might, but let's follow the trail for another hour and see where it takes us. Okay. Well, let's look for a place to camp as we're going, and if we find some place, let's stop. Yeah. All right. Sounds fair enough. So we're gonna. Can I do a survival check and see if uh, see if I can find a good place to survive? Yep. Come on, D. Don't let me down again. Uh, six. I'm gonna chunk this thing. <laughs> hey, it's a really good sneak attack die. Stop using it for things that aren't sneak attack. Yeah, I'm gonna put this over here in the sneak attack pile. <laughs> I'm starting a burn pile over here. Maybe you can just add. <laughs> y'all need, need a hammer and just start smashing. No, I've got I've got dice over here that roll high and dice over there that roll low. So, you know. So, so what you're one. saying is is that you're a cheater? Absolutely. Huh. All right, Car uh, Carlo, you're you're not doing too good. What about Will? Are you trying to follow these tracks? Did Will follow yep. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, following the tracks, actually. He's going on, going on ahead. All right, roll me D6. Okay. Hold on a second. Get the cheater dice out. <laughs> Use the good one. Now I got to run back down to where the dice are. Oh. <laughs> I just got a one on his search. Oh, the one. <laughs> As you, you start pointing out the, the uh, tracks to the ranger, as the barbarian berserker center there scratching her head, you start pointing out the tracks and keep following about the same time Will sees them too, and you both continue following. And sure enough, it, it's it's definitely orc tracks, and it appears that this would be a group of maybe three, four, five of them. You would think the way it's going, they're not trying to hide them at all as you as you move and it's getting close to maybe 15 minutes before dark as you're still following the tracks along pretty much are there uh, any the dark way, tracks with them nope y'all talked over each other what odds go first it, was there any dark tracks with it nope none none that you saw uh did while we were going along, we were looking for shelter. Did we find any shelter along the way? You, yeah, you found a spot that you could probably uh, they, they built an overnight shelter like you did the first night that you could, yeah. Fantastic. I suggest, as soon as we find that, I suggest, all right, well, let's let's hunker down for the night. Um, I'm going to get some more. I'm going to figure out how to get a little bit warmer because I am so cold. Yes, please. Shelter, please. 
Camp, camp for the night. I'm trying to be stoic like a monk, but it's not warming me up. Um, uh, how how many pal? Ugh, how much wood did that fire consume last night? Like, was it just one bundle, or all our bundles, or? As you as you start going through the bundles that you would have had your sails, or the bundles that were put on the the uh, sleds for you, uh, you discover that you're probably gonna have enough wood left and hopefully make it through another night. I start taking a sickle to my sled. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey! No, stop that! Not, not yet! Not yet! Not yet! We we need that sled to get back. We'll we'll sickle it on the way back. <laughs> we'll need those sleds if we have any hope of getting that that dragon out of here. <laughs> We're gonna need those sleds just to survive. Also, to get the dragon out of here, we may we may need it just to survive. We may okay. not have enough wood. We may not have enough wood to to survive. I just will go out. Okay, so Carla's gonna Carla's gonna start a fire, um, and uh, and when and when she gets the fire started, uh, she's gonna start taking off her clothes and like wringing them out and like. Putting them near the fire. Yeah, and the two river rats. I guess y'all probably have a change of clothes, I would hope. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, once Ives has changed out, he'll go looking for whatever uh, scraps of wood he can find. You actually find a little bit more this night than you did the first night uh, of some some brush and some small um, bushes and stuff that you can cut up and bring back. It would help, definitely help. Um, one more thing. I forgot to uh, bind my wounds earlier, so while resting, I'm going to do that. All right. Five, po five points of damage. It's back to his full hit point. But you're able to get your, your camp set up for the um, <clears throat> second night pretty easily. And we'll just go with the same um, order of, of watches we did the first night, unless somebody wants to change. Uh, so that would be Eve's. You would be up first. Yep. I'm just going to keep a sharp eye for anything. Yeah, it, it gets pretty uneventful. I mean, you're, you've got your warm clothes on. I mean, you found these... Um, brush and branches and things that were helping stoke up the fire with what, what wood you did have left and knowing that it's tonight's not going to be the night you're going to cut up the sled your your deal goes as you wake up jade and jade you start your watch jade about halfway through your watch you hear a, a noise coming from on further down the, the trail of where the orc tracks went you hear a noise like a, a, a chanting or, or some type of voices, and, and they're not speaking in common or any type of language like that. And then as you maybe peer out and look that way, you start to see what's lit up on across this ridge and stuff. It appears to be some type of lighting that is, is lit up coming from that way. Um, is it moving closer or is it just staying over there? It's not moving at all. It's like a it's a, like a lit area that you can see that the, the, the lights illuminating up from, from up there and it, it's not moving at all. I'm going to go investigate it. You're going by yourself, okay? Yeah, I'm going to, I mean, I'm not going to get super close. I'm just going to get close enough to see what I think the source of the light is. Yeah, you're able to do that. You're able to go up this little ridge and, and you know, you still see the tracks yourself moving along. And as you get up there, this is what you see is it goes down and off this ridge down into kind of a valley that appears to be maybe partially a, a frozen lake, maybe part of it, but also part of it's, you know, part of the mountain and the snow banks itself. But you see uh, all this lighting around a camp and you see what appears to be probably a group of 30, maybe 40, maybe even 50. You can't really count them or tell uh, right now, but there appears to be a very large orc encampment down there. And it appears there's some type of um, ceremony or something going on down there. All right. Uh, I want to see if I can't 
basically, I want to see if from where I am, if I can see any dogs. Yeah, roll me D6, just to... Two. Yeah, you get to moving and watching along, and you see, like, a, um, in the middle of the camp, maybe there's some more... You've got some, maybe, uh, watch fires and, and different things burning out where it's more illuminated. And you see what appears to be this orc that is, is appears to be an older orc because he's kind of stooped over... But he's wearing like these robes and these things that not appear like he's any type of warrior or anything. He would appear to be maybe some type of shaman or witch doctor or whatever they would call themselves. But you see what you recognize is White Fang is, is kind of tied to a post there in, in front of this. And this orc is doing some type of ceremony with it as a group of larger warrior type orcs are standing there also. Uh, I'm gonna watch the ritual for a minute and see if I can't discern the nature of this ritual. If, like, if, if is it a sacrificial ritual? Uh, you don't have anything that would give you that, though, do you? Besides, no. I mean, I can just watch to see if. Yeah, it I was gonna say besides a normal. Yeah. How long do you want to watch? Uh, I mean, until I feel like, yeah, I think it is, or yeah, I think it's not. Yeah, we'll say you watch it for 15, 20 more minutes or so. And you, by watching what you're seeing and, and their actions of the, the orcs towards this wolf dog, you, you, it appears that it's, whatever they're doing is nothing that is going to do any harm to it. It appears to be something that's some kind of ritual or ceremony that has no nothing detrimental to the, to the dog. All right, I'm going to make my way slowly and calmly back to the camp. And then, did the ranger yeah, you, have first you, watch? You, you, would, you would know Carla would have next watch. But did the ranger have first watch? No, nope, the ranger wheel would be after Carla. I'm going to go wake up the ranger and tell him what's going on. All right. Just because so far out. the ranger has seemed to be, you know, the most intelligent, even though he probably doesn't have the highest intelligence. He just comes across as intelligent to me. Yeah, I just realized that I've been playing my character wrong. He knows nothing. <laughs> you know nothing, Jon Snow. All right, Will, you've been waking up by um, Jade and you're informed of, of what he's discovered. You know, take it from there. Yeah, uh, he says, Ooh. He uh, goes around and wakes everybody up and says, Wake up, wake up. Seems like we've found the white fawn. I mean, I'm going to tell you, like, hey, there's 30... I'm not going to, like, say, hey, wake everyone up. I'm going to say, there's 30 of them. If you want to come take a look, I'm pretty sure we're just going to have to give up. Okay. It, if I'm walking up... Am I walking up, w Will? Yeah, he, he woke everybody up. Okay. All right. I mean, if you're still going to wake everyone up, then yeah, sure. Okay. I'm not going to stop you. Okay. What, what, what precisely did you see? Um, there was a ritual that uh, was going on. Didn't look uh, dangerous to the dog. Just looked like the dog was nearby. The ritual. Okay. Uh, thirty orcs, maybe fifty. They were moving around too hard to count, but there's definitely between thirty and fifty. And uh, yeah, it's their whole village is over there. Okay. Fifty of them and one of me, huh? Poor odds for the bastards. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll <laughs> so wait until not... you go okay. over there. That's fine. All right. So he's not in danger right now. I don't think he's going to be any danger at all. They seem to be treating him well. Okay. Can we? Can we go? I can. Sp I can speak Orcish. I would like to go up there to hear what they say. Oh sure, I can take you over there. Okay. I'll follow. Carla will also follow. All right, so Will keeps his distance away from Carla. <laughs> Eves, are you going with the group? Yep. Okay. All right. I would like to hear. I would like to 
be, be able to hear what they have to say. As we yeah, get to um, everyone that we have to crawl from here on out. I room. know, we have to go very quietly. Gray Finch leads you back to this overlying or overlooking ridge, and you see what was described as far as some type of, looks like a temporary encampment of these orcs that have set up on this, looks like partially maybe a frozen lake as part of it, and partially just ice and snow and stuff. But, um, Cinders, you're able to listen in a little bit as you hear maybe part of the, the, the speech and the voices that are coming off. And, and what you're able to gather is you get something about shaman visions, the wolf dog is their god, wolf dog is going to help them conquer, and everything you get is a very positive vibe as far as the way they feel about this white thing. I, tr I translate for the group. Okay, so we found him. The orcs have him and are treating him especially well. They revere him as some kind of deific thing, and we should just go home. Because we're not going to fight all of them. Carla can if she wants, but... Carla's already making her way down to the orc camp. <laughs> okay. Time by me. Alright, yeah, I'm making my way back to the dogs. I'm going to... I'm gonna move a bit away from here. This is clearly suicide. Anybody else want to go down with Carla, or is she going as the lone hero? What? Or the fool hero, Question. maybe? Question. All right. Since elves and orcs are normally enemies, if I show my face there... They are going to treat me as a royal pain in the ass enemy. Most likely. Before I answer that, Will, roll me a D6. Uh, three. You feel like, Cinders, that, yeah, your heritage and your things with orcs, you, you would know that. At this point, you feel like it's going to be a hostile that are going to, actions that would take towards you just being an elf between the problems yeah. you each all have. Oh, I can't show my face. I can't act as mediator if, if even if I wanted to. You can try. I mean, that, that's totally up to no. you at this point. Uh uh. Nope. Nope. It 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 would. It would, it, it would be as showing my face would be as bad as throwing a fireball at them. Do you want to move back to y'all's um, encampment with um, Gray Finch? I think I think we should. Are the are the rest of us moving back? Eve and Will. What would y'all like to do? But what about Carla? She's going, She's going to die. die. I told her not to go. We're telling her not to. I'm going to stay here. Stay hidden. You're going to stay on the ridge, okay? That's fine. All right. Um, well, if you're going to stay there and stay hidden, I'll come hide with you. But I still think this is stupid and we should get away with it. No, this is, this is suicide. I can't, I, can't, I, can't do, I can't do much with a single fireball. Yeah, no, we're just going to watch. I'm going to we'll step down run. as close as I can get into the camp. I can move yeah. fairly silently through uh, through wilderness. So, In Cinders, you would also know, with it not quite being the morning, unless you had that spell prepared again, since you've already used it once, that it's not recharged yet, unless you had it prepared a second time, which is, would be fine. Oh, I know that. Oh, I fully know that. All oh, right. I fully know that. Good, good enough. Um... Yeah, um, Eves, you're able to, to maybe, if you want to try to get a little bit more advantage situation to watch and see what's going to happen. Yeah, it's a two for silence. Yeah, that's perfect. You're able to, to get you a more advantage situation. Is the, I'm taking the other three are going to stay at the top of the ridge. Carla, you're starting your walk down to the orc encampment, correct? I am. All right. 
Let me see you coming. Some of them are armed with um, the um, axes, battle axes. Some of them are armed with spears, just a different assortment of, of weapons. And you would definitely know these are some type of snow orcs. To would be um, indigenous to these mountain ranges. They uh, the ceremony or whatever they're doing with this shaman looking orc and the, the big warrior looking ones are staying by him or stop as they all see you coming. At this point, they're not doing anything. They're just watching you as your lone person. What are you going to do? Okay, so uh, as much as Carla loves to kill, and as much as she loves to kill orcs, she also believes in giving everyone a fair shot. So at this point, what Carla is doing is she has her two-handed axe slung over her shoulder, and she's just holding it, not in a threatening way, like in a, I'm just carrying this you know, because it's a heavy weapon kind of way, uh, a way that warriors would understand. It's not any kind of threat. And then in the, and then the uh, in her, her other hand, uh, she has a bottle of wine. I actually have this as a thing in my sheet, uh, a bottle of wine. Right. So she has this bottle of wine. And I'm going to say that this wine, it, it actually comes like from her, uh, from her, from her like tribal grounds. Like this is actually like just some of the mwah, best wine that you could get. She's been saving it for a long time, you know, just for the perfect opportunity to be able to share this. And she knows that orcs are good partiers. They're good drinkers. So they might be able, they might like some of this barbarian wine that she has. So she has this other bottle of wine up in the hand as she's walking up and she's saying, uh, and she's saying, friends, friends, cheers, mates. Like just trying, speaking in basic common uh, to see how they respond. They all are looking at you, pretty much most of them pretty puzzled as you're speaking in common. And they, some of them look at each other and they look back towards you and they see the bottle, of course, that you're holding and then the axe slung in a non-threatening manner as you approach and... You see the older one that, that's, that's dressed different, that is kind of stooped down from age. Is he looks up towards you, and you see one of his eyes is, is glazed over of it. It's, you know, and he, he talks back to you in broken common, and he goes, What do you wish? She says, uh, okay. Hey, name's Carla, bear hugger. You might have heard of me, fierce warrior of the north and all. Anyway, um, like, hey, uh, we've been hired by this guy who misses his dog, that dog. And, uh, yeah, like, I'm just here to maybe ha have a celebration with you. I have this very fine wine, uh, and I'm willing to trade uh, this wine and a good time uh, for that dog if you'll let me have it. When you say that, he doesn't respond back to you yet. He looks back towards where these, the large warrior-looking ones are standing, which you would probably would know would be some type of leaders probably of the group. And he speaks to them in orc. And you hear one of them just let out a hearty, <laughs> and he says something back to this shaman guy. And he looks towards you, and he goes, Visions. This wolf dog. It's powerful for our group, our clan, to survive from intrusions of humans. The dogs stay here. You think that if the dog stays here, you're going to be protected from humans? He looks back towards you again. He goes... Oh, and she's not saying that, like, threateningly. She's, like, making sure she understands. Oh, I know. Um, yeah, he looks back towards you in, in, in the broken comedy. He goes, powerful magics. I, I do. Visions show me the future. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, look, so far, you and I, we have no uh, war or anything between us, so we're okay. Um, but if I go back and tell that guy 
you know, that you're not going to give up his dog. I mean, I don't know what they're going to send. Um, seeing the <clears throat> seeing that Carla is not immediately slain, Will stands up and he trudges down to the orc grounds. You start that way, Will, sure. You can start that way if you would like. It's going to take you a little bit to, to get down to where this is going on. And, Cinders, you would have heard him probably gather part of the conversation of the broken. Of course, all of you can understand the broken common and catch words and phrases, but most of you have probably caught what has been saying. Carla, we go back to you in the group as you're standing by. You start to hear a rumble <clears throat> and a shake and a movement of the ground around you and you hear the ground just spring and spray up with ice and rocks and things and as you do Carla this is what appears out of the ground right next to you in the group ice volcano as you see it, oh. as you see it come uh, hold up on. I gotta turn my bandwidth up <laughs> Okay, cool. All right. This is what you see is it shoots out of the ice right next to you. So, Carla, you're an initiative. No one else is right now. Nice. Okay. So, uh, I have my uh, I have my axe out, as I've already said. Um, uh, I need to roll initiative, right? Yep, roll B12. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to think of what I was about to do. Sex. Unfortunately, for you and the orcs, this thing rolled a one. Okay. It just springs up from the ground, and it's trying to gather and look at whichever target would be the most welcoming to it. It moves towards you, Carla. It moves at lightning speed as you see the horns that are up the top of it start to glow. And you see the mouth open up and you see the red ridges along its back start to turn red and glow and stuff as it moves towards you. And that's going to hit. As this thing lunges into you and bites you. As you take 12 points of damage as this thing lunges and bites into you. Ouch. As it does, Carla, you're able to maneuver enough to still be standing as it's up to your turn now. All right. So, all right, I have my axe in my hand. Um, he didn't break my wine bottle, did he? Let me see if he did. Nope, it's still good. Yay, all right, good. Uh, so she's going to put that wine bottle away quickly, and uh, she's going to say, where's your god now? And then she's, uh, no, she wouldn't do that. She'd go, uh, she would actually say, uh, say, uh, say, uh, dog god, please protect us. And then as she does this, uh, she starts to think about those elves that got away earlier and how she was just going to kill them. And she starts getting really angry and pumped up and her muscles are, uh, are getting big. Her hair, her hair turns, uh, turns uh, golden color and uh, shoots up into the sky. Uh, as, she goes into, <laughs> as she goes into her, uh, her, her uh, berserker. Yeah. And uh, so 1d6 plus level. I rolled a 5, so that's 10. Let me get a counter die here. All right. So there's going to be... So it starts immediately, right? Ten rounds, yep, it starts this round. So yeah, I'll right. keep up. You try to keep up with it mostly for me. Okay. Uh, so she goes into this frenzy, and um, and now she's going to uh, attack this uh, this giant thing, which is attempting to attack her. All right. Or did attack her actually, um, and she rolls in at one. Uh, she's too distracted by trying to get the uh, the sky dog to uh, to help them. I'm going to be nice to you, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, since you rolled in that one, yeah, you drop you drop your weapon on the ground, and you know, of course, you can pick it up and continue the next round. But we'll just say you dropped it. 
I mean, like if 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 I need to roll something else, I will. I don't mind. Nah, I mean, I'm not doing that ones on anything on this game. So yeah, okay. I mean, you just you drop it and have to pick it up. All right. As you're doing that, you see some of the orc guards with the spears run up towards this thing, and they're going to try to stab it with the spears. It seems they're, you know, some of them have run away, of course, but some of them are actually going to try to maybe help out. Wow, horrible. <laughs> Or oh, just horrible. Let's put it that way. You see them make no progress at all as we go to the next round. Everyone can actually roll, but the rest of you are quite some ways from where this thing is sprung up out of the ground, but you can be involved in it. Uh, how many rounds of moving will it take me to get close enough? It's to gonna, with y'all up top the way it is, it's going to take two, probably two rounds for y'all to get there. So last round and this round then? Nope. This round and the next one. Okay. The what about Will? I mean, he started down the. Will, you're going to. Yeah, Will has already started somewhat. You and Eve, and Eve's was a little bit closer. It's going to take y'all this round. Next round, y'all can actually do something, and but it's going to take you one round. Okay. Even even if even if I move closer, there's no way to find anchor points for a web spell without taking out orcs uh, uh, logistically. You, you... You, if you're going to do a spell with, with some range, it will take you one round, we'll say, to get to it. If, if you're going to move close close in, into it, it's going to take you two. I, I, I appreciate the movement, but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about anchor points. If I try to anchor a web, it's going to, it's going to clog up other people. Possibly very well could, yes. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Depending, depending on how many are going to stay in, 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 stay in the fight, true. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to I don't want to web people. That's that's, that's not my interest. I, I want right. as many people fighting this thing as possible. Right. Well, yeah, you, you would know from your knowledge, dear, most definitely it could be a chance of some of your friendlies getting in, involved in it. Yeah, and as far, far as I'm concerned, that the orcs, oddly enough, are friendlies right now. Jade, what'd you roll in D12? I didn't roll. You can roll, that. though. I mean, go ahead and roll. You're still moving, but I mean, just two. What about uh, Carla? What'd you get this time? I'll I'll roll and I'll move closer in case in case a web is needed, but right. I'm not anticipating it. That sounds good. To um, me. I rolled a ten. I rolled a three. Three for Carla. Ten for Cinders. Okay. What about Eves? Five. All right. What about Will? Nine. All right, Jade, you're moving that way still, right? Yeah, I'm going to try and get over there, but I'm going to try and be sneaky about it. All right. We'll go with the two rounds for you. Carla, you're moving on down a little bit further. Eves, you're moving on a little bit further also. Wait, Carla is moving further. I'm sorry. Carla's I mean, I meant, I meant Cinder. I'm sorry. I meant Cinder's. Carla, it's up to you. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, Carla, uh, uh, she uh, she recovers from uh, praying to the sky dog, and uh, she lets uh, down her axe uh, with a 17 to hit. 17 misses. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yep. Eves, you're moving on further down, right? Correct. Alrighty. This thing, Carla, that you just struck at with your axe, it's moving around its head, and you see the inflaming. Also, was your axe, I'm sorry, let me go back for just a moment, Carla. Is your axe uh, magic or not? Uh, it's, it's not. My uh, armor is magic. As your axe strikes down on this thing and hits or tries to hit this thing and bounces off of it, you see your axe start to turn in on itself and melt with the heat that is radiating off of this thing. And you can continue to use that axe, but it will be minus two to damage as it's starting to turn in on itself. Okay. From the, from the massive heat that is coming off of this thing as your axe got close enough for it. But you see this thing as it's turning and moving around and looking back and forth. And as you strike at it with its axe, it turns and looks back towards you, Carla, being the only target that it sees right now, unfortunately. Ooh, 19 with that. I will definitely hit. Uh, 
you will take 17 points of damage. And this thing as it bites into you. Okay, yeah, this thing uh, takes Carla up in its mouth and it unhinges its jaw and down its throat she goes as she's dead. Yeah, I'd put you at negative what? Uh, that'll put me at like negative, what, five or six? Um, yeah, like five. Make me a, you can make a save. I'm, I'm, I have 12, one, sorry, 17. Yeah, it'd make, it would make, put me at, it put me at negative four. Four, I believe. Well, it's 12 and 17 be negative five. I'm anyway, sorry. Make me a save at negative five. Save yeah, negative four. Five. Negative four. I'm at 12 wounds. That brings me up to 29 wounds. So it's a negative four. Maybe you can understand. Make me a save at negative four, man. I'm sorry. Uh, that's just a D6, right? Oh, a save. No, D20 here, save. Sorry. I guess I've been awake too long or something. Um, I, uh, I rolled a 12 minus 4, so that's an 8, so I failed. Yeah, if you want to continue about Carla's death and, and, and if you want to add something else, this she has. Um, yeah, no, she... Uh, yeah, you see uh, these pincers grab her by the sides, and uh, she actually sort of yells out in pain uh, as, as it does, and... Uh, it brings it brings her up and tosses its head back, and she just slides like right down its throat. I'm sorry, Car. You just see it go down its esophagus. See her. Sorry, Carla. Yep. No, oh, it's cool. Whatever. Will, we're up to you as you are moving and seeing. You see that your friend is picked up by this creature that appears to be 20, 25 foot in length, and segmented with the heat radiating off of it, and you see Carla just pull picked up and just pitched in and bit in and swallowed. You see Will uh, stand frozen in place. And suddenly um, the snow around his feet starts to turn yellow. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> You're going to keep moving that way, Will. <laughs> <laughs> he he looks at White Fag. Uh, you know, is he tied or, or is he? I mean, w what is that um, orc shaman doing? You see him saying almost in disbelief. I mean, he's moved back probably 10, 20 feet, but I mean, he's still, but he's just sitting there in disbelief. And you see him, you know, muttering and saying stuff to some of the other orcs as they're running around. What about what is, White Fang? What is, it, what is, is White Fang running? White thing is still tied to this post. Oh my god! Okay, um, Will, you know, uh, gathering his last ounce of strength, uh, takes out his bow and uh, tries to shoot the rope that's tying White Fang. Ooh, 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 yeah, roll me a d twenty, like a regular normal attack. Five. You hit one of the orcs standing over there by the side. You hit him in the foot. Okay. Uh, does does he get two attacks? Yep, you get another bow attack. Okay. Three. You get another orc in the foot. Uh, he takes out... Um, he actually uh, does his best to stay out of the range of that monster. Um, he ducks down and tries to hide in the yellow snow. <laughs> Cinders, you're moving that way and... Oh, I keep well out of the range of that monster. Well, 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 well <laughs> out of the range of that monster. You see some of the orcs that were standing there next to where Carla was that was trying to spear this thing. You see them, even seeing the horrific uh, death of Carla, you see them continue to try to stab this thing with spears. Hey, one of them's going to get a pretty good hit. And one of them takes makes fairly decent contact but you see this creature is it just appears to have no effect on it i mean even though it's been stabbed with a spear we'll go up to the next round um jade would you roll four all right carla is unfortunately out of it cinders <sighs> eight all right, what about Eve's? Six. 
All right, and what about wheel? Eleven. Oh. All right, wheel. Uh, Jade, you up first. Uh, I getting close enough to sling at this thing this turn? Yeah, you would be able if you wanted to move up enough. You could you could s s drive a sling at it. All right, I'm gonna take a sling at it. I have very little confidence, but. You never know. I miss. All right. Um, Eve. Uh, I cast warp wood on the post so that it will splinter and uh, fracture the bonds that are holding White Fang to it. Perfect. And roll me a never D20, just a straight D20 with no modifiers. See if something else may happen here. Uh, four. After you do this and the post twists and warps and breaks loose and, and the uh, white thing wolf dog breaks loose from it, it starts running towards your direction. You see the orcs continue. The, uh, some of them are brave enough to continue their onslaught against this creature that's come from the ice. Ooh, they both rolled 19s, so they both get some hits on this thing. They do a little bit more damage to it, but you still see it standing there and, and looking for its next meal. And as it does, it lunges towards one of these orcs. Oh, wow. It rolled a 19, too. You see it just pick this orc up and just snap it in two as it swallows it right behind where Carla just went down the gullet up. You see the red singeing of the deals behind it just glow even more. Cinders, we're up to you. You see White Thing has been loosened by whatever just transpired, <clears throat> which you probably did, maybe not saw Eve's do that, but you would know maybe some magics was involved. You don't know where it come from, but you see White Thing running towards y'all's way. White Fang, White Fang is definitely closing in on us. Yep, it is she he or she is loose heading your way. Um Is the rest of our group out of the range of a sleep spell if I were to drop a sleep spell on the orcs? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, Eve's is not really that close to it, and Wheel's not quite down that way yet, so, and, and Jay didn't go that far, so yeah, you, you would know they would be out if you wanted to pick a range down, you would know they would be out of it. Okay. I drop, I drop a s sleep spell on the orcs. <laughs> All right, roll me, um... Do you want to like shoot for more of the, uh, the shaman is or like a group of them that's off to the side or? Uh, just, just, just to provide some chaos. All right. Well, I mean, it's totally up to you if you want to go for like the group that's around where the shaman is, or if you wanted to go for a separate group that's off to the side. It's totally up to you if it's. Just, so, so, just somewhere near, near where the, uh, the, the creature is fighting, where, where, where right. the fight is going on. Yeah, that's fine. Roll me two d six and add three to it. Four plus three is seven. You see seven orcs fall to the ground, as they just seem to pass out. All of you see seven orcs fall to the ground. The Shaman and some of the bigger warriors that are standing there are still standing up, but you see seven other orcs in that area fall to the ground. Will, we are up to you as you see this happen, and you see also White Fang running toward Jarl's direction. Let's get the flock out of here. Let's get, let's get White Fang and the rest of our group and get the flock out of here. You're muted, Yon, if you're trying to. Yon, you're, you're muted. Yeah? 
Jeez. Not muted, just dead. He may have stepped away. Yeah, he's still in the yellow snow, I guess we'll say. Unless anyone wants to keep approaching this thing and the orcs down there, we would be out of initiative. I mean, but if you want, any of y'all want to continue or do some damages that way, we'll go into the next round. No, fuck that shit. Run. Run. Yes, run away. I run have, away. I have uh, one unit of dried pork, however much that is. I'm going to feed it to White Fang and try and get him to come with us. Eve, throw me a d6. That's a one. Perfect. White Fang runs straight to you as it's maybe has seen some bond towards you. It's running straight towards you, and you're able to, to get it and go back up the embankment where you come from. Yeah, I'm sure I fed him in town and that several times. That's right. Y'all are back up on this embankment uh, overlooking the whole camp. As you see this creature continue its onslaught against some of the orcs. A lot of them are dispersing, but it appears like it's still attacking some of these orcs. And you see the shaman standing there almost fearless as it's facing it and trying to do something to it. It's what y'all foresee. Let's, let's get out of here quickly. Continue back the way you come. Do you want to stop at your little encampment for the rest of the night or continue in the dark? Go, go, go. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> You're able to go in the dark. White Fang seems to have been taken well care of. Um, no harm come to it that you can tell at all. Um, you start your journey back. The weather actually breaks the next day and it seems like it's fairly decent weather. As you head your way back and within another day and a half, you make yourself back. You're able to find enough firewood to, to get enough uh, for the night or so. The next night, you make your way back to the village of Rolling Springs. Do we get the dragon? Yeah, we give it the dragon. <laughs> yep, you can you can bring the dragon back. It's been taking a bit longer, but that's fine. Fantastic. You can get the dragon. Fantastic. You never see the um, <clears throat> ice elves. You never see them again. You see or hear nothing else from Pelly Snoop. Seems like she just disappeared somewhere. Also, who knows if something got her or did not get her or, or what's going on with her? You don't see her again at all. You don't run into any more orcs. You don't run into more rimmer hazes as you get yourself back to the village of Rolling Springs. And as you do, Jade, tell me how this story ends for Jade as you're able to get the dog back to the mayor. Uh, I mean, Jade's going to try and convince them that they need to pack up and leave. It's too dangerous. It's dragons, weird lizard things, but they don't pay him any heed. So he... Um, he goes to find absolution somewhere else where he can, you know, absolve himself without dying so he has enough time to actually get, you know, absolved. Perfect. And, yeah. Carla, any last thoughts that she would have had as she goes down into the stomach of this thing? Any last thoughts that she would have that you'd like to present? Um, yeah, I would like to say uh, maybe if they uh, go back to the town, um, and you know, at night while everyone's uh, going into the tavern, and maybe to celebrate the return of the dog, you know, maybe one of the, the party members, you know, mentions, oh, yeah, well, you know, Carla, you know, she, she passed away out there. And, uh, and when oh, you yeah, mention, we're going to toast her. Yeah, uh, like uh, the bartender will say, damn, Carla. And he drinks his beer and said, she was the best damn lover I ever had. <laughs> and then uh, another, another guy in the, in the corner says, yeah, me too. And some woman says, yeah, me too. And just everyone <laughs> around the tavern is just like, yeah, me too. And it, like man, woman, whatever. Like they're, they're all like, yeah, best lover I ever had. <laughs> I did not know that White Fang could speak. He learned, he learned to work. 
Oh, my word. Senders, as it's customary in my games at the end, I always let each player um, give the ending of how they think the story ends. And, of course, I do my ending, so it's up to you, Senders. Tell me how the story ends for her. She finally gets her freedom. She, she's... She she's she released. She she's re- she's she's released. She gets her freedom. She she's still obliged to not harm the town, you know, after the all the injustices that they did to her. Um she, you know, she uh she bids them farewell. Um but then she decides she kind of likes it here. She hangs out for a while. She she helps helps them out before you know before you know yeah you know, she hangs she helps them out for a couple years. But maybe some some years later, she eventually does move on. But she she helps them out for for a number of years. Perfect. We come up to you, Eves, as you've got your bucket of pain, I guess. How does the story end for Eves? Uh, yeah, uh, Eves uh, is pretty much just content to make sure that the dog is back, uh, knowing that uh, once again he can return and start uh, railing against the people of this town. Uh, occasionally he runs into White Fang and he will pat him on the head and give him a little bit of uh, jerky that he keeps in his pocket. Uh, But for the most part, returns to painting houses with curses and uh, (laughs) planting mushrooms in the mines. (laughs) Great ending for Eves. Will, the ranger, how does the story end for Will? After having his fill of adventures and, um, you know, facing enemies that he cannot possibly uh, prevail against, Will packs up his stuff and leaves south for warmer climates. There, uh, he tries to settle down, but he ends up finding out that the girl that he falls in love with is actually his aunt. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Will knows nothing. Um, is that some kind of hint? Uh, do, you, do you need to talk, young? <laughs> you and your wife do a DNA test recently. <laughs> as the story ends, the way the characters told it, before I tell you how the story ends, once again, we used White Box by Charlie Mason to play this system tonight, and we also had a berserker, a druid, a monk, and a ranger, which were house ruled by me off several resources that I have found. And big shout out to James Spawn and his white box resources that I gave it a lot of information from. But let me tell you how this story ends. First, we go back to the village of Rawling Springs as you return White Thing to Mayor Frostfoot. He gives each of you the little corn sack of 100 gold each. And he puts his prize-winning sled dog back into the pens and continues winning prizes throughout the area. That's how part of the story ends and also ends the way that your characters would end. But the next day, a day and a half later, we go back out to the scene of where this thing burst through the ice in the orc encampment and swallowed Kala whole. The orcs have gathered up their casualties and the ones that have fled already, but they come back and dismantle their encampment after this thing has went back and hit in the ice waiting for its next victim. You see coming off the embankment of where y'all were at watching over the encampment now, which is just the the burst of where the ice is still burst up with this creature come through and some things laying around But as the camera pans up, we see a tall figure approach. And you see this red hair, this very short red hair. You see a human female sitting there looking down that way. And she's out of breath. (sighs) I don't know if I can make it much longer. 
got away from all of them, but I know they're tracking me. She's breathing very hard as a frost breath comes off of her, and she makes her way down. She sees something laying on the ground there. As you get up closer, it pans in where you can all see it. You see the bent-up axe that Carla carried that has been burnt in some and just disfigured into what's left of a smaller axe as it's laying there. You see the ranger gnome is Pilly Snoop. You see her reach down as she sees that. You see some tears start coming out of her eyes. As she reaches down and she grabs it and she goes, she was the best damn lover I ever had. <laughs> that is the end of the adventure known as Black uh, Fang on Black Knight. Excellent. Great players. Thank you all. Y'all did great at your characters. Thank you. And I'll stop it and we can go from there. Wonderful. Oh, that was awesome.